Okay, um, good morning everyone. My name is Bruce McPherson, a Santa Cruz County Supervisor and Chair of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. I'd like to call to, call to order uh, the Thursday, November 5th, 2020 meeting of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission to order. Uh, with, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Alternate Lynn. Present. Commissioner Gonzalez. Present. Commissioner Bator. Here. Commissioner McPherson. Here. Commission Alternate Reed. Here. Commission Alternate Mulhern. Here. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Here. Commissioner Caput. Here. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez. Present. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Bertrand. Present. And uh, Mr. Eads. Present. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here. We do have a quorum. Um, I'm going to change the order of uh, business here. Um, the, the personnel from Watsonville on item number 18, they wanted to make a short presentation of the update of their public works department. Uh, being that they have a commitment uh, mid-morning and we have a public hearing beginning at 9.30 and I'm uncertain how long it might go, I, uh, I've agreed to let them make their uh, brief presentation. I think it's going to be five or ten minutes uh, even before we get into oral communication. So uh, would the person from Watsonville introduce himself or herself and uh, make a presentation about your public works project in the city of Watsonville? That's the item number 18 on the agenda. Thank you, Chair McPherson, members of the commission. My name is Murray Fonts. I'm with the City of Watsonville Public Works and Utilities Department. And I am pleased to present the city's current transportation program plans. Am I up? Yes, as you can see the oversight of the river, Paro River and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. So welcome to the city of Watsonville. Had, had we been meeting on site, you'd be in Watsonville today. Yeah. This year, the city has several projects that it's doing in coordination with the state. Watsonville has several highways that pass through city limits. The city completed two complete streets plans recently. And a byproduct of those plans is Caltrans District 5 invited us to partner with them on a grant application using complete streets funds available to state agencies to construct bicycle and pedestrian improvements on highways 129 and 152 as part of a 2024 shop project. We're pleased that the state has invited us to participate on this. Caltrans also has a shop project that's underway at this time, installing a flashing beacon on highway 152 at Marchant Street. The city has a number of major reconstruction projects on primary arterial roads that will be taking place in the next year or two. These include work on Airport Boulevard from Freedom Boulevard to 700 feet south using gas tax and SB1 funds. Work on Freedom Boulevard between Alta Vista Street and Green Valley Road, which would take place in 2022 Funding is through Measure D and STIP. A reconstruction project of Green Valley Road is scheduled for next year from Freedom Boulevard to city limits and will use Measure D funds. And next year, a citywide road maintenance project is planned with funding through the RSTPX and Measure D sources. Watsonville has pedestrian and bicycle projects that are underway, including phase one, of segment 18 of the rail trail project. We anticipate construction to be done early next year. Funding is through an active transportation grant, RSTPX funds, as well as donations from the land trust and the friends of the rail and trail. The city also has active transportation program funding that it will use on a project built next year, providing pedestrian improvements on Lincoln Street and earlier this year, Measure D funds were used to upgrade one of the trails within the Watsonville Slough trail system along Struve Slough. 
Watsonville uses Measure D funds to finance bicycle and pedestrian safety and outreach programs. These include Bike Smart and Walk Smart programs that are done at local elementary schools and the Earn a Bike program, which takes place with middle school students and at high school. Watsonville is also a Vision Zero City, having approved an action plan earlier this year. There's a number of traffic safety projects underway and one proposed that involve installation of traffic signals. One currently being built is on Airport Boulevard at Home Road and it's being funded through Highway Safety Improvement Program funds. Another underway is on West Beach Street at Ohlone using developer funds and the city is submitting a Highway Safety Improvement Program grant to install a signal at Freedom Boulevard and Sydney Avenue. The city has a number of regional projects involving trails that we feel will not only build, benefit the city, but our neighbors as well. One is to construct a pedestrian bridge across Highway 1 at Harkinsloo Road. This in combination with a number of bicycle and pedestrian improvements on either side of the highway are being done in partnership with Caltrans, with the county and with the school district and will enhance the safety of those who are traveling this corridor, primarily Pajaro Valley High School students. That's so very welcome addition. Thank you very much. I think Mr. Caput and Ms. Thompson Gomez would say the same. The city is looking to proceed with phase two of the rail trail project, which would extend the trail out to Lee Road and the city limits in 2023. And then the city's currently designing a project that would construct a trail from the high school to the rail trail along Lee Road and would provide access to property owned by the land trust. It's their Watsonville Slough Farms property. They're currently looking at developing it for a trail system. And we're partnering with them with the hopes of constructing phase one in 2022. And, and as much as this is a virtual visit to Watsonville, I wouldn't want you to miss a virtual walk on the Watsonville Slough Trails. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you for sharing uh, and uh, what you're doing in Watsonville. The commission appreciates it very much. We've uh, had a policy recently of uh, having the cities and agencies uh, present there are numerous projects that are taking place. Um, yeah, are there any questions um, or comments from the commissioners on this presentation? If I, if I, Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's good to see uh, they're doing the work on that uh, crosswalk at Marchant Street and Highway 152 East Beach, right by our... <clears throat> A Veterans Memorial Building. Uh, they started uh, oh, about three weeks ago and uh, it's good to see it going in. It's been a long time waiting and I want to thank uh, City of Watsonville, their cooperation and also uh, Caltrans for finally getting the project going. It'll be a, a right by the high school. It'll be a pedestrian activated uh, crosswalk and uh, when school gets back to normal, we normally have close, we have 2,000 students going back and forth uh, in the morning uh, and in the afternoons and also at lunchtime. It's an open campus. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, it's, it's going to be a, a great improvement for uh, public safety as far as uh, pedestrian uh, walking and everything like that. So. Thank you, Mr. Caput. Anybody else have any uh, comments? Bruce? Yes, Ms. Kaufman Gomez. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, I really commend uh, the staff and RTC working collectively on these projects. I know that uh, we've adopted 33 miles of trails throughout the town, and it's nice to see that every year we're getting the next segment in there. We see a lot of the pedestrians that have benefited from this. We have a lot of bicyclists, a lot more bicyclists. And um, we, we still have safety as a major concern on some of these pockets in town. And maybe we'll find a way to sort of work through some of those solutions because we still have the pedestrian and the bicycle accidents that are around. Um, you know, we have a zero, a, a vision zero goal. And 
So we're gonna have to continue to refine that to improve the safety of our, of our neighborhoods. And uh, it's a pleasure being here to be part of it and to see um, the productivity of, of um, these improvements. I, I see the one right in front of Holman Airport daily, um, construction, grinding, whatnot. And I know that I will, I will see this come to fruition. Um, hopefully I'll be able to push the button before I'm off council to see that that light's actually working before I've left council. So it's a wonderful project to be done and safety for our community is important. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Councilman Gomez. Any other comments from commissioners? I don't know if anybody from the public would want to say anything at this point. Uh, this is just a re uh, brief debate. I just want to say thank you to the city of Watsonville um, and the cooperative efforts we've had, even uh, in the county voters who approved Measure D to the state as well uh, for this. Uh, it's taken a lot of cooperation to get this much going. And there's a lot of things happening uh, transportation-wise around the city of Watsonville. So I do appreciate your brief report and uh, we'll uh, continue on now with the, the regular agenda. First of all, any other comments? Any other comments? There's, there's a hand up from the public. I think they want to do oral communication, Commissioner Bator. Okay, thank you. I see the hand up, okay. Okay, uh, and then first, before we get into uh, the oral communications, I want to welcome community key Community TV for uh, broadcasting this. And Ian is the person that is in charge of uh, letting the public know what we're doing at the Regional Transportation Commission. We will go now to item number 22, oral communications. Uh, we do have somebody or a few people from the public who want to want to address us. Yes. Uh, items not there that are not on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Vernasa. Mr. Vernasa, you'll need to unmute. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Actually, it's uh, it's very interesting that I'm following a presentation from Watsonville because Watsonville's in the news as far as what I'm going to tell you. Um, my name's Ben Vernasa. Uh, I've uh, been a, a resident here since 1967. I've been flying since 1956 and out of Watsonville Airport since 67. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the new normal coming up on transportation and so far as aviation is concerned. I've been speaking recently with Ferris Sabah, the superintendent of the Santa Cruz County Office of Education. And the county is implementing this coming year, the AOPA, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, you can fly high school curriculum grades nine through 12 which leads to one or more of the following skills and trades, drone license, private pilot's license, aviation mechanic apprentice, avionics apprentice, FAA controller training, continuing education in college for aeronautical engineering and all other facets of, it, of aviation. This program will be available for all public, charter and private high schools in Santa Cruz County. The superintendent asked me to form an advisory uh, committee. The Watsonville Pilots Association and Experimental Aircraft Association at Watsonville Airport are on the advisory committee, as well as a representative from Joby, the electrical transport airplane company in Santa Cruz County with manufacturing activities and facilities at Marina Airport. I am inviting a member of SCCRTC commission or staff to represent the RTC as a member of this advisory committee. I would also like to reserve a place on the committee's uh, commission's next agenda for Henry Michael, who's heading up the program for the County Office of Education to bring you up to date on what's, how this is being moved along. It's very exciting development for our community. Right now, the travel industry is in the doldrums, but that will improve as the virus is conquered and it will grow back rap rapidly. Uh, in 2025, there'll be a great need for high school and college graduates in the industry. The way the program is gonna start is in the ninth grade first next year, for and then ninth and 10th the year after, ninth, 10th and 11th, and then ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th. And in the year 2025, 
the freshmen of next year will be graduating into a boom for travel employees and throughout the aviation industry. So thank you very much. And I'm so glad to bring you this good news for Watsonville and for the whole county, Santa Cruz County. Any right. questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Vermont. That's, uh, congratulations on your program. Sounds very exciting. And uh, it's gonna present, I'm sure, some great opportunities for many students in the future. Is there, are there any comments from the uh, commissioners? Yeah, I know. I just didn't know if anybody from Watsonville might have something to say. Yeah. Yeah, no, really. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in being on that uh, committee if it's okay. possible then. All right, uh, we'll we'll get to that sometime. That's in the exciting news. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, any other oral communications? Yes, we have Mr. Culligan. Yes, uh, good morning, Commission. Um, my name is Bud Colligan. I am uh, a resident of Live Oak. I wanted to just comment in general. I'm not commenting specifically on the agenda item relative to eminent domain, but I just wanted to note that we have now had two elections where the use of the rail corridor was the primary issue. And in both, voters have been clear that they do not support your current plan. You've had three failed rail operators in eight years. The last, you believe the hype from Progressive Rail and Friends of the Rail Trail, despite the fact that it was easily disproved with just elementary due diligence. You now have a trail from the San Lorenzo Bridge to State Park that can't be built because we don't have the money, it's unfunded. And if you look at your own charts, in previous board packages, you'll see that 88 million of $101 million for a segment of the trail, 7.2 miles, is unfunded. Despite the fact that the voters passed Measure D in 2016, and 17% of the funds was supposed to go to the trail. Now you wanna spend millions on eminent domain, all to produce a train that will never be built. It's time to listen to voters and reevaluate this clearly flawed plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cullion. Um, Mr. Otto. Uh, quick sound check from the commission. You hear me okay? Yes. And um, could you also put up my slides that I sent in yesterday? Uh, we have one there with the bicyclist on a trail. Uh, uh, yeah, if you could go to the previous slide, please. Sure. So um, Keith Otto, county resident, good morning. Uh, sparse intro slide here first to say that I hope the comments are received in the manner intended. They are not to finger point. It's rather about ideas, not individuals. Let's agree we're all good people here, admittedly with a variety of opinions. It's about policy, not people. Next slide, please. This past month, there's been plenty to read about in the Sentinel opinion pages regarding the RTC and the rail corridor. Last month, there was this guest commentary, train service, not a realistic transit solution. You've heard me and many others make similar comments. I won't repeat them here, but do give it a read if you have not done so already. On the same day, on the same Sentinel page, was a letter to the editor. Also read that if you have not done so already. The letter writer is an RTC commissioner. That fact was not disclosed by the letter writer or the Sentinel, perhaps then not required, though it would have better informed readers. The letter outlined some RTC history and actions. I would describe those items quite differently. The letter goes on to mention funding. I would invite the letter writer and the public to view the actual California Form 460 reports which tell a very different story. The most interesting part is the letter ends asking how democracy works. Next slide, please. And this being election week, it's the perfect time to answer such a question. Democracy is when people vote. Consider the RTC discussion back in June when one commissioner said, among other things, if you're really interested in knowing if these ideas are supported by the public, 
Let's have a vote on a spending plan. Let's get it out there and see if any of these things comport with the will of the people. I don't think they do. Another commissioner spoke next, and it's the same commissioner who wrote the Sentinel letter asking about democracy. And he said, I completely disagree with everything that my colleague just said. Wow. And I hope you also saw the editorial in the Sentinel yesterday, democracy boosted by voter turnout. You've even heard from others that have a completely different idea of what should be done in the rail corridor say, listen to the people. And perhaps this is a place where we can agree or at least start to come together. So what's the bottom line here? Democracy is when we vote. My ask then is exactly that. Please put your rail corridor plan to a vote of the people in the county. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Otto. Are there any other members of the public to address the commission? Uh, uh, Mr. Scott? Yes, good morning. You can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I just wanted to make a general general statement of support for the, the current uh, progress that the commission and the county are making on the, the rail trail and on, uh, you know, following the Measure D uh, allocations and, and the, the intent of that, of that legislation. Um, I think we all know that there will always be uh, detractors and kind of opponents to the current, the current uh, plans. But I'm I'm always reminded that several studies have been conducted, and the Transit Corridor's alternative analysis uh, study is underway and about to be uh, shared uh, its conclusions. And I think over and over again we've found that rail and trail provide the greatest return on on investments. And you know we're making this investment for for the future. And as as uh, untenable as that might seem to some critics. I think you all are doing the right thing. I think this county is doing the right thing. And I wanted to share that I was just off a call with uh, the Clean Communities of Central New York, one of the Clean Cities Coalition members from the Department of Energy. And there is just a great deal of progress in the world of propulsion technologies for trucks and buses and rail vehicles, including hydrogen, uh, which is looking to be a superior fuel to batteries, which are heavy. But in any event, the technology is there and we're gonna be watching as transformation propulsion technologies for everything from bikes to cars, to trucks, to transit vehicles is going to uh, take place before our eyes and tran transform the way we move about. So I just again wanna thank the RTC for the uh, progress and uh, working to, to meet the Measure D uh, recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Mr. Sonartaro, Ryan, sorry for your mis saying your last name. Ryan? You'll need to unmute yourself. Ah, uh, there I am. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yes, I, I spent quite a bit of time uh, in the past couple of months walking around the district. Uh, uh, dealing with the supervisor race and, and District 1. And one of the things that I discovered was that there's a tremendous amount of confusion on the part of the average person on the differences between the rail and the trail or bike roadway option. And I think it's really incumbent on the RTC to create some kind of clear and easy document that would allow voters to understand that Measure D funded a trail, it did not fund a train, that a train will require significant money from elsewhere, that a train will require a tax increase in Santa Cruz County, that pursuing the train option will at some point eliminate by, uh, Measure D funds for building the trail, and so these are mutually exclusive options here, and that the uh, decision to continue with the train, especially now with the uh, with the idea that you're going to use eminent domain for a train between Santa Cruz and uh, Davenport, where there's absolutely no commuter uh, traffic whatsoever, 
I think these things need to be very clearly explained to the public so that the public can actually start to weigh in in an informed way about how the RTC has been proceeding over the past eight years. And the results of the election in that district shows that there's significant opposition to how the RTC is proceeding. So I would very much appreciate it if you actually could collectively, uh, you know, pro and anti uh, train and trail people generate a document that was neutral and factual. Thank you. Mr. Slade. <clears throat> You'll need to unmute yourself, Mr. Slade. Stephen Slade. I guess you, Mr. Slate, can you unmute yourself or we can't hear you? I believe he's still on. Getting close to nine. He's still on mute. Okay, yeah. um, we have an upcoming 9.30 public hearing scheduled. Um, does anybody else after him? No. Okay, Mr. Slate, uh, you've got 15 seconds to get on or we'll move on. Okay, I think we'll move on. Um, it's nearly uh, nine. Well, we can, we might as well go ahead and try to get the uh, consent agenda approved anyway. We have a couple minutes to do that. Uh, so we will uh, move on. Oh, excuse me, uh, number three, are there any additions or deletions uh, to the consent order? Yes, I, I've, other than the uh, change that was already made, there's no um, uh, changes to the agenda um, um, order, except um, there are handouts for items 15 through 17 and replacement pages for, for the agenda itself in items five and 22. And that's uh, one document um, on our website. And then there's also replacement pages for item 17 and additional handouts for item 17, and that's a separate document on our website. And that's uh, the only changes and additions. Okay. Um, we will quickly go through the consent agenda, items number uh, four through 13. Um, I didn't see that there's, does anybody want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Okay. I'll, um, any uh, comment from the public on items uh, four through 13 from the public? Okay. I move okay. the consent agenda. Have Second. Uh, also okay. moved. I'm, I'm uh, sorry, we have Sally Arnold. On the, cons on the consent agenda? Yes. Okay, Ms. Arnold, what item did you want to um, comment on? We have a motion and a second from Schifrin and I think it was Kaufman Gomez. Or Jacques. Well, it doesn't matter. Oh, Jacques. Okay. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Did you, uh, Ms. Arnold, did you have a comment on a, item uh, four through 13? Yes, I do. And it's um, very brief. I'm Sally Arnold from Friends of the Rail and Trail. Um, I just wanted to say that we're both, we're, uh, we at Friends of the Rail and Trail are excited about both items six and seven. Um, you know, the, the idea of creating public art around the trails in, uh, that will be built in Santa Cruz City is excellent. The trail isn't just going to be a way through the town. It's going to become a destination in and of itself. And we really appreciate your leadership on that. And similarly on item seven, um, it's just great to see these repairs finally being made to the uh, rail line. It's, it's really exciting. Every, every meeting, there's yet another place where things are being put to rights. And I ju we just want to say that we see it and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Okay. Um, any other comments from the public? We do not have any other comments. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, the consent agenda, items four through 13. All those are, we need to call the roll. Yeah. Thanks. Commissioner Bertrand? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Caput? Great, we unmute. 
Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulher? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Caput? Aye. The, the uh, consent agenda is approved unanimously. We will now skip to item 17, a scheduled public hearing at 9.30 a.m. Uh, resolutions of necessity for the North Coast Rail Trail Project segment, segment five. Um, Grace uh, Blakesley um, will be making a presentation and I believe also Mr. Mattis, our general counsel. But first we should have a staff report. We'll open the public hearing on item number 17. Good morning, Commissioners Grace Blakesley, staff and North Coast Trail um, Project Manager. Can you see my presentation? Yes. yes. Thank you. So this morning I'm before you to ask for your consideration of resolutions of necessity for property acquisition required to construct the North Coast Rail Trail Project. First, as I go through my presentation, I will describe the scope and purpose of the project. Then I will describe the purpose of the resolution of necessity hearing explain why staff is before you requesting this hearing today for the North Coast Rail Trail project. Then I will describe the property acquisition that we asked you to consider in today's resolution of necessity hearing and wrap up with a summary of the action requested by the commission today. Grace, can you um, put your slideshow on? Oh, is it not showing? It's showing, but you're showing the, all the slides. Oh, all right, thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you for letting me know, I appreciate that. Okay. Is it still showing the um, full presentation or just are my slides? Now you're showing the full presentation. Thank you. You can use the arrow. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. So the North Coast Rail Trail is a seven and a half mile multimodal active transportation project located along the Santa Cruz Branch Rail Road Corridor from Wilder Ranch State Park in the south to Davenport in the north. The planned project includes a paved bicycle and pedestrian trail with parallel and paved shoulders parking improvements at Davenport, Panther Yellow Beach parking lot and access improvements at the Bonnie Green Beach parking lot. The project also includes the construction of farm access roads. Here I'm showing cross sections from the trail that were included in the addendum to the final EAR adopted by the commission in March, 2020. The project is, um, Um, construction of the project and its amenities will provide a public benefit by way of providing public access to a safe alternative for bicycles and pedestrians separate from motor vehicles on Highway 1 between Wilder Ranch and Davenport. And the trail will also provide an American Disabilities Act accessible trail available for transportation and recreational users and provide designated public access to the North Coast beaches and bluffs. The project is nearing final design stage and is scheduled to have all pre-construction activities and required approvals completed in fall 2021. Construction of the first phase of the project, which extends from Wilder to Yellow Bank Panther Beach is fully funded. And RTC is seeking funding for construction of phase two. It has been noted in prior meetings that the construction funding for phase one was shifted by the grantor central federal lands under the federal lands access program to fiscal year 2024. RTC is working with the Central Federal Lands Division to advance the funding to construction in fiscal year 21-22 to bring the trail to the public as soon as possible. Your approval today would be another step in completing pre-construction activities, which include environmental review and permitting, right-of-way acquisition, project design, and move the project towards construction. It's worth noting that not only will the North Coast Rail Trail construct, construct seven and a half miles of active transportation facilities between Wilder and Davenport, but it contributes to seven and a half miles of the 32 mile coastal rail trail that extends from Davenport to Watsonville. 
and it will complete the majority of segment five of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail, which includes 50 miles of trails with a 32 mile coastal rail trail as its spine. The trail in the North Coast will also be part of the California Coastal Trail. And as the project Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Scenic Trail is constructed, each project is undergoing design activities similar to this project. So a resolution of um, necessity hearing is scheduled today on your agenda um, as part of this item and following this presentation. The purpose of requesting you hold the resolution of necessity hearing is to complete a formal step in the property acquisition process to acquire properties required for construction of the North Coast Rail Trail project and to ask you that you consider that this project is in the public interest and, that and identify the necessity for the project consider the project's compatibility with the greatest public good and the least private injury, and the need for the property for this project. The hearing also follows offers having been made to the owner and owners of records for these properties, and the outcome of your action would be pursuing dedication of the property for public use. With respect um, to the North Coast Rail Trail, the resolution of necessity is to move forward the right-of-way certification for this project by requiring railroad property that remained in ownership by Ocean Shore Railway parallel to RTC's purchase of the branch line. Ocean Shore Railway was another railroad company operating along the coast side of the Davenport branch line and later part of the Santa Cruz branch line. Portions of the um, Ocean Shore Railway property are required to construct a trail alignment on the coast side of the rail line and would bring additional rail line property into public ownership. So the, the, your action today for the North Coast Rail Trail also is considers providing easement for drainage and locations in some locations where a 19 foot farm access road is proposed for construction on the coast side of the trail as part of the project to allow farm equipment access between drainages. Right of way is also needed um, to construct the Davenport parking lot to align with Ocean Street in Davenport and allow for a pedestrian crosswalk. It also maintains the timeline for completion of pre-construction activities in fall of 2021. Before going through each property one by one, I'd like to outline the properties for which property acquisition is being considered and refer you to the associated attachments in your packet where the property is described in detail and the resolution of necessity is located. Also note that offers have been made to all the property owners and negotiations are underway to purchase the property. The resolutions of necessities for this property is to ensure that the trail right of way can be certified that the trail can be constructed in, as designed and that the pre-construction activities can be completed by fall 2021. So the De La Mora property that we'll be discussing today involves um, proposed acquisition of a drainage easement at the location of the farm road construction. The Miller, Miller Trillium uh, LLC property is property located at the Davenport parking lot and is an attachment to. Ocean Shore Railway property is, portions are required for the trail alignment and collective property acquisition resonance are um, described today and referenced in attachment four. Another portion of Ocean Shore Railway property referred to as just Scaroni Road um, is also um, looking at acquisition of portions required for the trail acquisition and selected property acquisition resonance. And finally, the Alderton or Ocean Shore Railway property is similarly portions required for drainage improvements and farm access road. In the case of Ocean Shore Railway, the proposed property acquisition will, res may res will result in parcels that will no longer have value as a result of the acquisition of property needed for the trail. Therefore, staff is proposing to acquire some of these remnants, which I will discuss later in the presentation. The fifth parcel listed is noted as Alderson and Ocean Shore Railway, and offers have been made to both parties as the ultimate ownership of that parcel is unclear. In this case, there is a question of the parcel was created correctly by surveys and then sold to Anderson, even though it belonged to Ocean Shore Railway. The obligation of RTC is to pay just compensation for the property. The potential property owners have the opportunity in the condemnation action to, pr um, to prove their ownership interest. So 
the portion of the property owned by Mr. De La Mota and proposed for purchase um, uh, of a drain as easement is addressed in the fact sheet and resolution of necessity included as attachment one. The property is located on the coast side of Coast Road, north of Speroni Road and Highway 1. So here is Coast Road. Here's De La Mora property and Highway 1 would be up here. Also, agriculture has an agricultural easement on this parcel and therefore is also included in the offer to purchase. The offer is to purchase 2,256 square feet in three different locations where a drainage easement is required. As shown in this slide and the following slide, slide these three locations where a drainage easement is required is being pursued in locations where a 19 foot farm access road will be constructed on the coastal side of the trail. So the gray here is the trail and the striping in the middle, and then the gold kind of color here is the farm access road. Here um, is the drainage coming across the um, trail and the farm access road, and the sections right here on this side of the dashed black line, and here is where the easement would be, and I'll show you something similar on the next page. The farm access road constructed as part of the project provides access for the for farm equipment between the fields located on the up coast side of this drainage and the down coast side of this drainage. And it adding this farm road in construct requires that the drainage extend outside of the rail line right of way, which the border is here. So something similar here. Um, this is just south of that location down coast. Here is a farm road, the gold and the drainage coming across, and here's where um, the footprint of the trail with the farm road extends into De La Mora Park. And this is, um, excuse me, the earlier two exhibits showed um, the trail and farm access roads and drainage footprint in the area of the De La Mora property. And this exhibit refers to the same property as the two prior exhibits, but I thought it was more helpful in showing the encroachment areas, the dark, um, the hatch line is the trail footprint and the dark areas are showing where it encroaches the drainage encroachment into De La Mora property. So this is the area before you today in the resolution of necessity and included in attachment one. So also as part of today's action, staff is requesting that the RTC consider purchase of a property owned by Miller Trillium Enterprise LLC for the purpose of constructing the Davin Park parking lot improvements. Extending the footprint of the parking lot south um, of the RTC owned property designs the parking lot entrance to align with Ocean Street at Dav in Davenport and to allow for a crosswalk to be designed as part of the project. So. I wanted to show on the slide that the dark um, dash line here for north is the RTC owned property and as shown here, this is the Trillium property. The um, Ocean Street here is coming across and here is the entrance um, to the parking lot and it would line, um, extending it into this property lines it up so that a crosswalk could be included here. And from the property, there was a, uh, from the parking lot, there's a connection down to the trail, which is located on the coastal side of the tracks. We, um, as noted here, we did send an offer to purchase this property in September, 2020, and negotiations are underway. And similarly, as a, with the De La Mora property, I thought this would be helpful to show you the hatched area is the trail and parking lot footprint and the darker shading is the um, area that's proposed for acquisition as part of the property. Okay. This slide provides information about three parcels adjacent to RTC owned rail property and owned by Ocean Shore Railroad. Acquiring portions of these parcels is needed to construct the North Coast Trail alignment on the coast side of the tracks. Staff is also proposed an acquisition of some remnants that would remain after RTC's proposed acquisition of Ocean Shore Railway property that have no economic value. In these cases, staff is um, proposing the acquisition of these remnants either because they are land, would be landlocked between RTC owned property after the property acquisition or because they may serve a future transportation purposes. 
Some information about Ocean Shore Railway, they operated along the coastline within the project area between 1905 and 1920. Um, the route was originally intended to connect between San Francisco and Santa Cruz. And they, it was operated on the coast side and parallel to the Davenport branch line in the area of the North Coast Rail Trail project. RTC acquired the Davenport branch line in 2012 as part of the Santa Cruz branch rail line. However, portions of the rail corridor remain under the ownership of Ocean Shore Railway, which, are, which originally was assembled as the parallel corridor in the late 1800s. Staff is proposing to acquire portions of the Ocean Shore Railway property required to construct the North Coast Trail Rail Trail adjacent to the RTC Santa Cruz branch rail line and some economic remnants. For the purpose of today's discussion, um, uh, Ocean Shore Railway parcels are shown in four different, um, as four different parcels and parcels one through three and a Scrony Road parcel. This um, image here depicts the location of three of the more northern parcels. Here you have Davenport um, and extending down past Bonnie, near to Bonnie June, and then a section down um, closer to the Wilder Ranch State Park um, cultural area. So this slide depicts parcel one. Um, the up coast portion of the large parcel or parcel one um, is just north of the project area in Davenport and extends south just um, and extends south all the way down to Laguna. The remnants are areas. Um, so let's see. The acquisition area here is shown in yellow. And the remnant areas are shown out, the remnant areas that are proposed, um, they're uneconomic and proposed for inclusion um, in the acquisition are outlined here in red. This one continues from north of Davenport, just to the southern um, end of Davenport Beach. There's another section south of there that continues onto this page. Then another portion south of Bonnie Dune Beach and then um, another portion just south of the Henley Beach here, uh, south of Van Breen Farms located over here and extends onto this page. Um, it's important to note that not all remnants are recommended for acquisition either, acquisition either because there is an economic value associated with them or because they are not expected to serve future transportation purchases. The resolutions of necessity and fact sheet associated with acquisition of these parcels and uneconomic remnants is identified in attachment five of your staff report. So again, I mentioned the parcels are separated into four um, separate areas for today's discussion. So similar to parcel one, um, par portions of parcel two railroad property adjacent to RTC owned property are needed to construct the trail and that is area is shown in this map. In this case, there are no uneconomic remnants associated with acquiring this parcel. Um, the fact sheet and resolution of necessity that relates to this parcel is included again as attachment five. This is um, a graphic showing parcels three of the Ocean Shore Railway owned property adjacent to RTC owned property also needed to construct the trail alignment on the coast side of the rail in this location. Um, in this case, there are two uneconomic remnants proposed for acquisition um, as part of this, and they are shown outlined in red. These land remnants would be landlocked between RTC owned property upon purchase of the property required to construct the trail. Um, the fact sheet and resolution of necessity related to this slide is identified and are included in attachment five. So this slide looks at the Ocean Shore Railway parcel we refer to as Scaroni. Um, Scaroni Road is located here. This map is of this entire subject parcel and portions of this parcel are required to construct the trail on the coast side, similar to the other parcels we've um, described. In this case, there are two uneconomic remnants. All the property remnants are shown here, and there are two that RTC would propose acquiring, which are here, economic remnant three and five, which again would be landlocked, similar to the others after RTC property, um, our acquisition of property for the trail. Okay. 
Um, this is the property I mentioned at Alderson or Ocean Shore um, and is adjacent to the RTC, um, adjacent to the RTC on property. Um, this five foot strip of this property is required to construct drainage improvements in a location where a farm access road is designed. Um, as you can see here, I, this parcel is located south of Speroni Road um, near Four Mile Beach. As mentioned earlier, this parcel may have been established um, due to a survey area, error. And so offers have been made to both parties. Um, this graphic um, shows this location more zoomed in. Because it's a small strip, it was a little hard to see, but um, this is the rail line right of way. Um, this is the strip of property. You can see there's a farm road um, being proposed for construction on the coast side of the trail here. Um, and it pushes the, extends the drainage out into um, the five foot strip. And so the area in the blue is what is being proposed for. And here another graphic I, as similar as I utilize with the De La Mora and Trillium property to show the trail footprint and how many trees are in the position of trail. Thank you for your attention as I went through all of those properties in, in detail. Um, so today the process for the RON hearing is to conduct hearing and accept public comments from affected property owners and members of the public and um, to answer questions for from uh, the council, um, adopt five resolutions of necessity via separate motions for each of the resolutions of necessity included in attachments one um, through five. And, and that completes my report today. Thank you very much. Commissioner McPherson. Uh, thank you for that uh, thorough presentation, Ms. Blakesley. I just wanted to ask uh, our council, Mr. Mattis, if there was any comments that you think are necessary before we uh, open it up for comments from the commissioners or the public. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. The um, uh, Grace covered all of the issues that uh, needed to be identified. Um, the only point I would emphasize for the commission is that today's hearing is to consider the adoptions of the resolution of necessity. So you're looking at the public interest and public need for these property acquisitions. The issue of property valuation is not part of the determination today. Um, that's a process that's involved uh, negotiations with property owners right now, and ultimately would be determined by a court if we're unable to uh, reach a voluntary agreement with the property owners. Um, thank you, Mr. Matt. I just maybe uh, I just have a question uh, uh, on the seventeen seven of the brief. Um, do we have it says uh, the our, our commissioners actively uh, seeking the remaining funding needed for the, to construct phase two? Do we have any idea of how much that is? Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, we are right now preparing to submit a grant to proposition for proposition sixty eight. Um, state park funds. Um, they are for a rural um, trail program and also for a regional park um, program. Um, we we're looking at about a $4 million um, gap in funding um, for uh, construction of phase two at this point, but we would seek more um, if possible um, in order to reduce the amount of Measure D funding committed to the park. Thank you. Um, before I go to the public, do uh, any members of the commission have a comment? I want to hear from the public first. Oh, Commissioner. Well, I have a comment. I have a question. Well, a question. Sure. Mr. Shifford. This is really a question for the attorney, and it has to do with the, the way the, uh, this process would work. My understanding from other situations um, that were similar is that there, is, there are tax benefits to property owners uh, by uh, selling their property through the eminent domain process, as opposed to a negotiated sa uh, sale before that process. So at certain times, there may be willing sellers, 
but they benefit from going through having the public agency go through the uh, eminent domain procedure because it gives them certain tax benefits. Am I understanding the situation correctly? Uh, that is correct. There is a deferred um, tax on gains that are received when property is acquired through a condemnation process. And so the steps that have been taken to date by RTC, including the formal offers pursuant to um, uh, the state laws, do confer those that benefit on any property owner that we uh, negotiate with. This is a somewhat unique situation for some of the property owners because one of the uh, one of the property owners is a now dissolved corporation, and so that corporation has some uh, successor agents that we are dealing with right now. But in short, yes, there is a uh, there is a benefit to property owners when there is a. Uh, acquisition through condemnation or under threat of condemnation, which is what this is right now. Another question that I think is worth asking is how come uh, when the uh, commission acquired the uh, rail line that these properties weren't included? Was Because uh, my sort of vague memory is that uh, there was the understanding that they were included. And so what was the process that sort of led us here where, as I understand, the vast majority of the property that needs to be um, acquired is essentially a narrow strip right adjacent to the land that the commission owned that, um, as I remember, the commission thought it owned uh, when it uh, purchased the rail line from the UP. So, could we get a little background on how um, we're, we sort of got to this position where we need to acquire uh, uh, such a long uh, strip along what the commission already owns? Maybe so, that's a question for the executive director. I'm not sure who would best, would best answer it. I, I'm happy. I'm happy to answer that initially, if you like. So, so um, the the trail alignment and the design of the trail does cover property that was initially thought to be part of the original acquisition of the railway right away that the RTC made. Um, through the process of certifying the alignment, um, so that we could uh, secure the necessary um, grant funding. Uh, became known to RTC that uh, some of the property was uh, adjacent to the property we owned. And that arises in part out of the fact that historically, back 100 years or so, there were potentially two rail lines that were running in, in somewhat parallel to each other through this line, through this area. And so um, when RTC learned that, they first did look at whether or not um, it was part of the original property acquisition, whether or not they could acquire that uh, or perfect the ownership of that through a quiet title action. Um, but to do that, you have to have originally have owned, had an ownership interest in that property, which uh, extensive survey research done by RTC uh, suggested was not the case. And in fact, it was owned by Ocean Shore. And so then we went through the process of acquiring the property um, by identifying exactly which property was necessary to be added on and, and uh, the minimal amount that was necessary to be added on, and then uh, making the offers that, that the, the staff um, have made to the property owners now. Grace has talked to the commission of, of, of somewhat today about, or extensively today about, some uneconomic remnant parcels. And for the most part, those are parcels that would essentially be between the property that we're acquiring for the railway and the property that we already own. And so since the appraisals had fully valued that, um, meaning that the amount of money that would be paid to the property owners included that value, um, it is, it is, uh, recommended to the commission that we acquire those uneconomic parcels too. So essentially there won't be a, an island between two parcels that we own. So when the commission acquired the rail line, um, it would, would, 
there weren't detailed surveys of every parcel that were made, I take it. And it was really the commission um, used the property information that was provided by UP that seemed to include uh, the, the, these properties. Is that, is that correct? Um, that, that's my understanding. I would defer to Luis or um, Grace if they have any further input on that issue because I wasn't with the commission at that time. Yeah. Good morning, commissioners. This, uh, this is Luis. Um, uh, yes, I mean, in, indeed, the commission thought that um, uh, the property, that, I guess the footprint of the property was almost slightly different than it actually turned out to be after, after the surveys because part of part of the um, information that was received by the commission uh, was that the track uh, was uh, sitting in the uh, in the middle of the, of the property uh, that the RTC was uh, acquiring. Uh, that was the information from Union Pacific. Um, but then when surveys were done, uh, it was discovered that the track was actually sitting uh, not in the middle of the property was acquired, but actually to uh, one side, uh, and therefore it, it meant that there was quite a bit more property on the on the inland side um, than there was on the uh, ocean side of the of the track. Okay, well, thank you very much. I just thought it would be helpful to have some clarification of the background of uh, how we got to this point um, with this project. So that, that uh, those are all my questions at this time. Any other commissioners have any questions before we go to the public? I have one. Um, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So I'm curious about the parking lot and the, and the crosswalk. Is, is the parking lot going to be on the north side and people would have to park there then travel across Highway 1 to, to access the trail? Mm -hmm. um, the parking lot is, is located on the coast side of Highway 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they would not have to cross Highway 1 to get to the trail. That's correct, from the parking lot. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any other? Uh, let, could I clarify that a little bit? Because um, the, the crosswalk, it, as the commissioners may remember, the commission has supported putting up some kind of additional signal um, <laughs> Uh, at that crosswalk because for the residents of Davenport who would use the trail and or go to the beach, that's a very, as you could imagine, that's a very dangerous uh, crossing. And so um, as part of the project, there's going to be the crosswalk and the commissioner has already approved um, setting aside some funding for the design of some kind of safety beacon that is still under discussion with Caltrans, um, but was designed as part of the uh, uh, improvements. So while, it, uh, as staff has said, the parking lot is adjacent to the trail, it's currently used as a parking lot, it's just gonna be improved and, and uh, made uh, better but um, there's also a component of the project to try to increase the safety for the people who uh, live in Davenport and also for the people who go to Davenport for services and then want to use the trail. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Uh, Mr. Bertrand, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, as Steve and Matt has said, we're not talking about the costs, but I was wondering, uh, as a question to Grace, um, is there any information we could share with the public right now? There were some comments and letters, et cetera, that might give us an idea of what the cost or potential cost would be. You mean for the property acquisitions that are at stake? That yes, yeah, exactly. Roughly the total value of all the property acquisitions before the commission today is about $250,000. Okay, so we're not in the millions. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, any other questions from commissioners? Okay, I think we have some uh, members of the public that would like to address us. Mr. Pico? Yes, hi, it's Terry Pico from APTA. A year or so ago, I joined a lunch meeting with the Santa Cruz Republicans. I'm not a Republican, but I enjoy differing viewpoints. Our table conversation began with the high-speed rail project but soon turned to how they hated how California used eminent domain to steal Fresno area farmland forests. They stated how they hated eminent domain. 
never one to miss the debate. I said, eminent domain can be useful for civic projects. Like what, they asked me. Take the Trump's border wall, for example, where eminent domain is being used to take farmland to build it. The place erupted and several guests left the table in disgust. But returning as to Trump's wall, Billions have been spent, but only, if you you didn't know this, or I didn't know it, only nine miles of new wall have actually been built with those billions. The rest is spent on repairing the existing 390 miles of fence out of like the 12, 12, 1,200, 1,500 miles of, of border. At the, last, at the last three RTC meetings, I presented how the RTC doesn't own large portions of the corridor, including most of the corridor from Watsonville to the boardwalk, how building a trail will violate any railroad easement regardless of the situation, and that to avoid this potential cost of eminent domain, uh, it will cost you well over a hundred million dollars. The train is your Trump wall, an expensive vanity project with no net benefit. First, you go to eminent domain, then small projects to show how you are making pro progress. Does that sound familiar? Today starts with eminent domain to take farmland to build your trail. Again, a Trump-like ploy to save the track. We're really not talking about the trail. We're talking about the train. That's your wall. A train that will never come, close, come but is costing the county $10 million approximately per mile already, just like Trump's border wall costs about that much. Today it is about Davenport. Tomorrow it is about Watsonville and the boardwalk uh, corridor. I hear it, build the wall, build the wall, build a train. This is all it's about. We all know that there will never be a train to Davenport, so I don't know why you're trying to preserve it. This trail effort, if ever finished the way it's being done, will cost well over half a billion dollars. Don't kid yourself. It's an unattainable cost. If a train would ever be built, you would have to put a solid fence uh, along it, like the wall along the whole trail wing, a fence that would resemble the cages that keep children from their parents. Expensive, useless, harmful, and the stealing from farmers for a vanity project like a Trump wall, Trump tower, however you want to look at it. The rest of us homeowners down here are waiting for it to happen to us. You're going to take our backyards. I am powerless, but all I can say at this point is shame, Shame, shame. You don't need the train. Uh, the train's not going to happen. So why are you spending so much when you could just simplify it? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pico. Mr. Vernessa. Okay. Well, I've been a CPA for 60 years and been involved in some eminent domain cases. Uh, not from a legal standpoint, but I've been able to work with lawyers. And the key question you're working on today is the public necessity. And I really don't see the public necessity is there. I think you've got the cart before the horse. I mean, that's the last thing you should do from the train standpoint, because there's a 60% chance at this point knowing what I know about the people in this county that are against the train, there's a 60% chance there's not gonna be any train. So that shouldn't be done now. Now, the other thing, um, uh, talking about, I would imagine that one of the things you're thinking about is a tourist train. Uh, well, why not, uh, why not extend that with Metro getting involved with tur tourist buses? And let's not just stop in Davenport, let's go, then, let's let the tourists see the sea lions as part of the trip, and then come back to Davenport for a rest stop and maybe have lunch and buy uh, crinkles and so forth from the merchants in Davenport. So there's no need for a train to go to Davenport. Um, so my, my suggestion temporarily is to put this thing off. Secondly, I don't think you were at this point yet, but I think the whole the solution is to rail bank and let's get the trail done. I was on the sanctuary com a committee for four years as representing the bicycle committee as an observer. And you know, I mean, that's what we talked about. It's a trail, not a train. 
So that's my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Barry Scott. Okay, thank you. This is Barry Scott in Aptos. And I wanna thank the commission again. I attended two open houses. I know that there were originally eight alternatives uh, for this stretch, uh, for this challenge for the, the North uh, Reach that was boiled down to four. And we've been through a CEQA process already. And I think we have a thoughtful uh, result. Uh, contrary to what I think I'm, others in my neighborhood are thinking, this is not an eminent domain matter and, and less than until offers, uh, reasonable offers are, are uh, refused. So um, it's a simple purchase, a pretty routine procedure, I think, for, uh, for, for projects like this. I want to say, how lucky are we that we own the nine or 10 miles that we already own and that we just have to add some bits to really elevate this project into a world-class trail with restrooms and parking. Um, so we're so close to getting that done. And I'm just, uh, I'm just delighted to hear the presentation and, and to learn more about the leftover bits, the remnants, which really are gonna kind of create a, you know, a, a sacred no build zone, um, you know, a little bit of a sanctuary of, of land between the trail and the ocean that uh, if, it, if it needed to be developed, it could be developed for educational purposes or something, thus enhancing the quality of this fabulous trail. So good luck with the negotiations. I hope it goes well and that we can just proceed with the, the, the rest of the planning and construction for those sections. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Mr. Keith Otto. Yeah, quick sound check. Are we good? Yes. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, Keith Otto County resident. Uh, two quick comments, questions. Uh, one is what what is the position at this point with regard from the property owners? What's their level of embrace or resistance to selling their parcels? And the second item, uh, you know, if a trail only approach was pursued, right? All theoretical, of course, since this isn't the current direction, would all of these same parcels, would all of them need to be acquired? So what is it that the RTC knows about these two items and what is it they're able to share? Thank you. Thank you. We'll hear all the comments from the public and then maybe we can answer some questions if need be. Anybody else? Marty Demare. Yes, hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to comment on uh, your plans for the Delamora area. You have uh, you had a slide up briefly, but I have the uh, plans from the federal people. I wanted to see if you could clarify, Ms. Blakely, about how the public will access uh, the access easements that lead to the beach where there is a gate uh, from the private road that leads to that Delamora farmstead, but then also connects with public access easement that you will now be um, using for a farm road. And how will the public get through those gates and be able to use that new farm road and so forth? because these are dedicated easements and um, deeded, and of course, important to coastal access. Can you explain that? Yes, any, can I share my screen again so I can pull up a slide that would be helpful for answering that? Um, 
Mary, I'm having trouble pulling up the slide, but I know that you know the area and, and I'd be happy, um, but I can explain to you. So when you come access from Coast Road, um, there's two places where you've identified a public access easement, both that uh, travel through De La Mora property, one on the up coast side of the drainage and one on the down coast side of the drainage. Our current proposal is that you would cross at the current existing crossing and then take the trail to the south um, down coast side of the drainage and um, the access there would be maintained. Um, these decisions are subject to approval by the California Coastal Commission, um, as well as um, we are working with state parks to identify appropriate signage for public access in that location. Did that explanation give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about without the slide? Yes, uh, thank you. I was just um, concerned that provisions were not being made where, where a gate is shown there for, for the public to be able to get around that gate. And There's uh, no longer a gate proposed on the inland side. Okay, good to hear. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Commissioner Brian Peoples. Yeah, hi, can you hear me, Brian? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, um, you know, we've heard a lot of the, you know, our, our regular slogan that we would be talking, but I'm actually pretty surprised about how much property needs to be purchased. Um, um, really surprised. And right off the bat, you know, I want this organization, the RTC, to be successful in the public eye. So I don't think it's really a good timing to bring this out. And um, so right off the bat, I'll suggest that um, at the end of the day, you are spending in money and time and legal fees uh, for a future amusement park train. Um, I don't understand why, why the, our community has to continue to battle this. Um, taxpayers, you're essentially having taxpayers funding a private train operator. Um, so it's uh, a not a necessity. And actually, in the letter that you that we submitted for trail now, um, we believe it does um, violate the EIR requirements not to impact private lands and agricultural lands. Um, and it it I think we need to step back and look at the other two alternative plans, the trail only and the farmers plan, and they doing that. Um, will not delay this project. It actually will probably expedite because you'll be working more in collaboration with the community. Um, truly, the community is was reaching out to you, asking you all to be more respected to us. Um, you know, having said this, all this, we get it, the parking lot at Davenport, get it, totally get it, but there's definitely a lot of elements of this um, eminent domain that you're imposing on ourselves as taxpayers because you have to keep this train. Um, so really, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not going to uh, continue to work, go on and on and on, but you, you saw the community. We did the elections. Um, we're asking that you step back and say, hey, Maybe the trail only plan from Santa Cruz to Davenport will work. Let's get behind the community who wants to do this. The farmers have, you know, are with us. So we're asking you just to step back. And this is just a great example, you guys, of, of how trying to accommodate this amusement park train is costing us a lot of money. This is, you know, segment 7A. Um, is a great example of what you're going to be doing for this. Anyways, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Over. Thank you, people. Hey. Is there anyone else in the public? Or yes. Okay. Hey. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Faye Levinson. I'm a resident of the Santa Cruz County in Aptos. Um, I've sort of been following the train debacle for about 35 years, and 
talking about whether or not it was really going to exist in this county. And right now, I'm concerned about two things with this uh, land acquisition. One is the costs, and the other is whether it's environmentally the sensible thing to do to continue a train from Santa Cruz to Davenport when the feasibility of actually having a tourist train going to Davenport seems very, very unlikely. Uh, so in order to save the cost of putting in a train, why not use the tracks that are there and make it part of, I believe it's segment seven, and make it a rail trail that people can use from Santa Cruz to Davenport and not concern ourselves with the costs and the environmental impact of a tourist train that may or may not ever go all the way to Davenport. And just to let you know, uh, just something Andy Schifrin said earlier, there is now a stoplight, a flashing light in Davenport between the businesses and the parking lot. Uh, that was put in several years ago when a small child was hit crossing the road and killed with, she was crossing the road with her parents and a light went in shortly thereafter. And that's very much appreciated by the people who not only live in Davenport, but the tourists and residents who drive back and forth on that road. So my suggestion is rather than worrying about eminent domain and spending money on property that we don't need, go ahead and put in the uh, trail along the tracks and ignore the idea of a tourist train or some kind of commuter train, which wouldn't serve anybody in the Davenport area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, David VB. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm David Van Brink. I live in Santa Cruz City. Uh, just responding to an earlier commenter, I think comparing public transit to a border wall is rather silly. Uh, so anyway, uh, I've biked to Davenport along Highway 1, and it's occasionally terrifying. So I just wanted to thank you for your efforts towards building the North Coast Trail. Uh, I think it's definitely a very popular project. So thank you. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Sally Arnold. Hi, uh, I'm Sally Arnold, uh, board chair of Santa Cruz County Friends of the Rail and Trail, and we support the resolution as it is necessary to complete this popular project. The, um, you know, that North Coast Trail project was subjected to the intense scrutiny of a full EIR. I, I read it, it was long. Um, and the current project was compared to eight different alternatives. I think somebody earlier mentioned that. And they included the trail only plan and the farmer's alternative. And after looking at it, you know, people say, well, you should study it. It was studied really well. And this one, this option was selected as the most environmentally superior choice. And the RTC certified that final EIR for this project almost two years ago in March of uh, 2019. It's, pro it's highly probable that the trail only and the farmer's alternatives would also need a process of eminent domain um, to acquire some land because this high quality plan includes features like the storm drainage that uh, Grace pointed out and the parking lot. And that land would be need, you know, we need to acquire that land anyway to construct those things, no matter you know which, uh, which of those three choices were made. And the only reason we're not able to do like a really direct comparison about those eminent domain takings for either of the alternatives with the current project is that neither of those were developed to the level where takings could be defined. But you know, we need that, pro we need that parking lot. The people of Davenport want that crosswalk. Um, the, this is a high quality trail. And it's not just like somebody throws down some gravel and says, good enough. Um, and as your agenda packet reminds you, there are 10 objectives that were evaluated as best met by this particular project, including this acquisition. And just a few of those things, just so we keep our eye on the ball here, was to minimize the impacts to private land, including agricultural and residential, to minimize the impacts to sensitive habitat areas and special status plant and animal species, to provide an ADA accessible trail, including parking areas and paths to the trail, maximize ocean views and scenic coastal vistas along a coastal alignment, maximize safety and serenity by providing a trail separate from roadway traffic referenced by the last speaker. This resolution is necessary to meet those goals. And I know that, you know, 
people's hackles get up with the words eminent domain, and I was well educated by what Mr. Schifrin um, asked about around people sometimes choose the eminent domain route for uh, for tax purposes. And so I, th I think that you're um, I think you're in really uh, good shape with this choice, and I really hope that you will you will go ahead and, and pass the resolution of necessity. Thank you, Mr. Slade. You're on mute, Mr. Slade. Stephen Slade. Um, How about now? There you go. Okay. It's magic. Sorry for all of that. And, oh, and the baby's gone. I've been working for um, I'm the Stephen Slate. I'm the executive director of the Land Trust of Santa Cruz County. And as I'm sure you all know, we're your partner in this project, the rail trail in general, and especially on the North Coast. Our role was to raise up to $5 million or $4 million of matching funds for those grants to build and design. Uh, we spent a good deal of that money already. Uh, and the rest is waiting to be spent. So we sort of view this as um, an implementation decision. Uh, you've made this decision to proceed this way years ago, and you've made it over and over and over again. And every time an implementation action comes before you, we hear, oh, let's start over. Let's scratch everything. Let's give back the money. Let's tear up the master plan. Uh, and of course, at the land trust, our reaction is, well, what about the money we've already spent getting this project to this place where construction is going to happen uh, in a year or so? So we, we fully support this as an implementation decision and is just another round of uh, the train never people uh, basically holding up the construction of our trail. It's ironic. It, the trail now people want to proceed with building the trail. And that's what the land trust is doing. And we're putting our money behind it. And we hope you stay the course. Thank you. There are no more hands up, Commissioner uh, McPherson. OK, thank you. Um, we will close the public hearing uh, portion of the uh, of num item number 17 and return to the commission uh, for commissioners. Uh, any comments that they have? Anybody from the commission wish to do? Yes, I do. Okay, Mr. Commissioner. Well, wasn't Aurelia, why don't you go first? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my brace, I'll give you some time. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wanna make some comments. Um, if, I mean, I know this, uh, we need to move forward with this, but I am a little bit disturbed by Trail Now advocate. <clears throat> Uh, because you know they they're blinded. Uh, they're, they're to me. I hear white privilege. Uh, we want to be able to get on this trail now, ride our bikes, walk. <clears throat> but you know, what about the folks in Davenport that maybe want to be able to get on a train eventually to commute to Santa Cruz? Uh, they need that. Give them that option. Uh, <clears throat> what about them? You're you're saying, oh, they don't need it. What about those handicapped folks that they can't ride on a bike? They can't go on those long trails. And can't see that scenic route, and have and and being given them a, a train, to be able to give them that ability to to go and take that that uh, that view. Um, what about those seniors that can't afford a ten thousand dollar trail bike to ride on there? They they have that option to be able to get on a train, and go into those points of destination, and 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 enjoy those views. Um, you know, it, it just it's disheartening. <clears throat> because they com com continue to push their trail only, but it, it's only for a limited amount of people for their trail now. Uh, it's not really for the whole community. Uh, it's going to sh show just use for a small portion of people that can afford expensive bikes um, and have the luxury to have that time to walk the trail. Um, but how about the common folks, the hardworking folks, the folks in Davenport that struggle to to meet ends meet? Um, they like to be able to sometimes get on a on a train and, and travel, uh, or get on a bike and travel, 
Um, but I think we need to give him the option. And with that, I will render my time to Andy. We'll go to Mr. Schiffman next. Thank you. I just want to sort of emphasize a few points. One is that this trail, um, in addition to the, uh, the very generous contribution by um, the land trust is funded by a federal agency. The, the, the real, the, the project is being pushed forward. It's actually under the control of a federal agency as we've learned through this project. And it's mostly federal funds that are gonna pay for it. Uh, and hopefully, uh, at least my hope is that we'll have, uh, get additional federal funds to finish it. But this is a, you know, the idea that somehow if we decide to go in another direction that we could just do it right away is really nonsense. Um, this project as has been kind of alluded to has been in the works for years. This federal agency has designed it. If we decide to go in another, uh, another direction, those funds would be lost. The federal agency is not gonna simply um, redo the project because the commission um, at the last minute essentially changes it my, its mind. Also, I wanna refer to the, um, the uh, EIR that was done on the, uh, the, the trail in that it did evaluate the trail only option at the same level of detail as the preferred project and found that that option had significant unmitigatable uh, environmental impacts and was in fact not as environmentally preferred as the, um, the option that we uh, are pursuing today. Um, another point, somebody asked, what do the property owners think? I think it's uh, meaningful. This, the, uh, the eminent domain process is partially to really make sure uh, that property owners are not taken advantage of by public agencies. So they have very significant rights under, it, it's a big deal to take uh, property under eminent domain and the public agency has to go through uh, a complicated process that the property owners have the ability to participate in. I think it's, it, it's a, uh, it's a, it means something that no, no representatives of property owners came and testified today uh, against this project. The people who came to testify against it were largely people who just don't want to train. And I find it fascinating that the people who say they want the trail are essentially opposing a trail project because that's what this is going to be. This is not a train project. This has nothing, um, uh, I may agree with Aurelio's desire to eventually have a train, but that's not what this is about. Um, we're trying to increase public access along the coast by pedestrians and bicyclists uh, to uh, use the coastal, the, this coastal trail. That's what this project is all about. And that's really all it's all about. And other issues will be dealt with, whether it's other segments of the trail and how they'll be developed or whether there will be a train or not a train are issues that we're gonna have to grapple with in the future. Here, we've got the opportunity to move forward with um, a significant um, rail, a trail along the, uh, along the coast, going from Santa Cruz, hopefully all the way to Davenport. Um, and um, I think it's really important to support it. So I'm, uh, I would like to make a motion to support, uh, to approve the staff rec uh, recommendations for this item. And I don't know whether there needs to be a separate motion for each of the resolutions of necessity um, or not. If there um, is, I'll, um, my motion would include the, the first resolution and I, uh, I'm sure staff will tell me or the attorney will tell me how many more resolutions there'll have to be. But if this passes, my intention would be to move the subsequent resolutions as well. So that's- I'll second that. Well, for attachments one through five, maybe, excuse me, if in the, the midst of your motion, uh, Mr. Council, uh, can all of the attachments be approved in one motion or does each of them have to be? Uh, yeah, we, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, we would recommend that the, that the uh, commission take up each resolution individually. It creates a separate record for each, uh, each of the actions themselves. And so we would recommend that 
I'm happy to walk the commission through each of the five resolutions, if that would be helpful um, once all the commissioners have had a chance to talk. Okay. Well, uh, before we entertain a motion then, uh, if you don't mind, I'll go back to you, Mr. Schifrin, after we hear uh, if there are any other comments from commissioners. I have one. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Chair. So um, I did want to point out embedded in the purpose of the project uh, that Mr. Schifrin said this was all about trail. Um, item three says develop the trail so future rail transportation service along the corridor is preclude, is not precluded. So they've embedded that uh, tenant in there specifically for the purpose of, of the train. So that's number one. Number two, um, I don't have a $10,000 bike. I have a $300 bike and I ride it three times a, a, a week. So to kind of proclaim that this is just for the privileged class, uh, number one is really a misnomer and misguided, I think, in, in, in my position. And the other thing is, it's just ironic, you know, South County is one of the reasons why trail now is so fervent in its belief about moving people. There's a utilitarian argument here, and that's the greatest benefit for the greatest number of people. And that is a guiding principle. I, I think that we in the RTC, transport, you know, it's regional transportation, moving the greatest number of people to uh, different places. And, you know, I, I have to agree with the people that say that this is something of a boutique sort of uh, project from the standpoint that this serves very, very few people, okay? It doesn't uh, get a lot of people off of Highway 1, although that's part of the EIR, Alternative to Travel on Highway 1. Um, I guess I could get a response from Grace on what do you mean by that, okay? Uh, there aren't going to be lots and lots of people that are going to that are going to take this trail as an alternative to, to travel on Highway 1. It's just not true. So, you know, my argument is we're concentrating efforts right now on this kind of isolated property north of Santa Cruz um, when we should be concentrating on getting thousands of people on a trail from Watsonville, we respect my uh, South County uh, commissioners, from Watsonville to Santa Cruz. That's where the people are, okay? That's where we should concentrate our efforts. And notwithstanding about the plans that have been, been, been made uh, two years ago, uh, everybody here who represents their, their constituents because of COVID-19 has had to do what? We've had to pivot. We've had to look at things as the way they are right now and change and, and, and adapt. And I don't see that happening with this uh, commission. So the resolution of necessity is a misnomer, I think. And uh, I'll do respect to uh, you know, the different entities that have put in money here and put in money there. My goal is to move people from one place to the other and do it in a way that is not boutique or retail, but in a broad sense, sense of the term of transportation, of moving people and making a true difference in the transportation habits of our community. So I won't be supporting it, as you might tell. Okay, thanks, Ms. Johnson. Um, any other commissioner would like to address it? Uh, Ms. Kaufman Gomez, you're muted, but go ahead. Uh, thank you. I have a street sweeper, so I needed to make sure I stayed mute until the very end. Um, yes, we, we have transportation blight, and it isn't just Watsonville that has that issue. We have a large uh, segment population of the Community Action Board um, constituents that are in the North County as well. And so our voice that we're talking about making sure that we don't have a transportation blight or that there's just the exclusivity of transportation options, um, we, we need to encourage and, and have available the resources for those that are at the north end as well that are still in a financial situation the way we find the South County um, population to be. The other benefit too of this is when, when, you're, when you're throwing something down for the improvement, you might as well take care of what you need to in the process of doing the improvement. And this provides the RTC with the ability to do so. 
the benefit of the drainage is not only going to be for the trail, it's going to be for whatever else the adjacent parcel is going to be um, that, that's there in, in the improvement of that. So we're, we're probably going to see the benefit not only of the ag component that's adjacent to the drainage, but um, any future mass transportation component, as well as the, the trail system itself. And when it comes to getting to the north end, I'm sure that the $300 bicycle, as well as the $10,000 bicycle could benefit from the trails as they get developed. And it would be a nice opportunity if, if the South County were able to reach the north end that way and not having to go through an hour and 25 minutes of traffic to go 17 miles um, to take a bike to, before they can even get to some of these trails to a beautiful north end of our county as well. So there is a limitation and a barrier as a result of not having these trails built and having a, a, the ability for some of the not only the recreational purpose as well as the purpose of mass transit for others. So this is not a boutique method, um, but obviously there's a lot more recreational use for those mid and north county that the South County do not have the ability or opportunity to get to. Um, and this will provide them with the resources to do so and ownership of the process there. Conversations have taken place with those particular owners with these parcels that are not useful for them right now and that will benefit from any kind of capital improvement the RTC can invest in. So this is something I do support and that I wanna make sure we recognize that we do have um, a low income population at that North End that need to be heard as well with their voice. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bertrand, did you have a I guess you were next. I'm not sure. I think so. Go ahead, John. Well, that's all right, Chair. Um, in general, I like the idea of assembling the small pieces that are adjacent to our right of way. And uh, for historical reasons, we didn't get them. We thought we did. Uh, Andy sort of uh, pointed some attention to that. I think with this assemblage, it will make it easier for the RTC in the future to move on any kind of plans that the board at that time agrees to. In general, I think that discussion is going to come to a head in terms of what we move on once the situation becomes apparent to the public. I think someone from earlier comments from the public uh, talked about that. And I think all of us are going to have to realize that we do have things that we would aspire to because we like the idea and we think that there would be a lot of utility for the public, but the economic viability won't be there. And since the beginning, when I first got on this board, I do believe that the um, rail options around Watsonville make a lot of economic sense. Um, our current providers backing out on that, so maybe I was wrong, and whoever we get uh, to replace them may be able to make that economically viable. But this is a future discussion. What's going to happen, whether we're going to do a rail or just um, despite ERRs and stuff like that, reevaluate just doing a trail or some other kind of combination. That's for the future. So I support this because we are assembling little bits and pieces that will enable the RTC in the future to better optimize the right of way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other commissioner? I, um, Commissioner Bachor had uh, his hand up. Mr. Bachor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, uh, commend uh, staff, Grace, and probably Corey probably put some time in this effort also. So I want to acknowledge the hard work of RTC staff to bring this project to us. Uh, I think the thing we got to remember here is any way that we can get a trail portion completed, if there happens to be a train alongside it, that doesn't bother me at this point. I think we're all here about getting the trail done and, and the generosity of, of the uh, land trust, along with the grants, our, our staff reaching out, finding those grants. You know, when we're not paying taxpayers, using taxpayers' money to build a trail, I think that's good for all of us. But we may have future decisions or you may have future decisions down the road uh, for, for what goes on with this trail. But for right now, this is a fabulous project. I think that we wouldn't be moving forward to do these acquisitions if it wasn't in conjunction with some kind of agreement with the homeowners. And I totally support this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bachor. Any other commissioner? The hand up. Mr. Mulhern. Uh, chair. Uh, um, who was that? Was that Mr. Uh, Mulhern? 
Yes. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, I, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm, I think probably everyone knows I'm uh, dubious of the feasibility of rail transit in Santa Cruz County. So I, I don't really think of this project in terms of, of transit. Um, it, it, it is true though that, that the, the, the ra this rail line was acquired, the project that we submitted to the state to acquire the rail line to access Prop 116 funds was a dinner train from Santa Cruz to Davenport. And so this project really is the realization of that initial vision that uh, the, the RTC has been working towards this whole time. Um, I think that uh, as other people have mentioned, there's a future discussion about what the transit might look like in the rest of the county. But um, for now, I think that, that um, um, as Commissioner Batorp also mentioned, this is an opportunity for us to to complete or at least extend um, some tourist facilities to the north. Um, and there certainly are a, a lot of, of beautiful places that will be accessible now uh, once this project is built um, that will be both bicycle um, adjacent to the rail line and perhaps a tourist train or a dinner train of some kind like I said, realizing the vision of the Prop 116 funding application. Um, that being said, uh, this process that we're going through right now, I think um, all commissioners need to bear in mind that this is what the development of the rail line is going to look like for the rest of the 25 or whatever miles of rail line that we're gonna have to do because there are a great many, the ownership of a great many of the parcels that we're going to be crossing with, with whatever project we end up building on here have uncertain ownership. Um, and we're not, we don't even now know wh who owns or, or what number of parcels have uncertain ownership uh, between Santa Cruz and Rio Del Mar. And then south of Rio Del Mar is also a huge question mark. So I think the commission needs to bear in mind that this is what the process for the rail line development henceforth is going to look like. We're gonna have uncertain ownership. Uh, we're gonna have to take who knows how much land and so I think that those proponents of, of some kind of future rail transit project need to realize that, that eminent domain is going to be inextricably intertwined with any efforts to move forward with rail transit in this county. Very well, thank you. Um, any other commissioner would like to address this? Commissioner Brown. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add my uh, my support and I uh, agree with many of the comments that have already been made. Um, but I, I do just want to highlight that um, the the purpose here today is not about debating the, the whether or not we should have rail um, along this uh, 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 trail line. It's about whether or not we should use the process of imminent domain. Um, which I believe is a legitimate way to uh, consolidate these parcels to make that uh, space accessible. And it is um, moving the, the trail portion of the project forward. Um, and it's, it is not delaying. We are not delaying that. And that's what I've been hearing from the trail now folks is that, you know, our, uh, our wanting to do it, you know, have a train is, is making things take longer and it's, you know, it's, it's creating all of these delays and that's just not the case. And um, as others have suggested, um, the resources that have, have been made available to us have largely come from our commitment to exploring passenger train service in the future. And um, so, I, you know, I just wanted to, to put my two cents in there and, um, and just, say that and thank you to staff as well i know this is you know since i uh it wasn't uh appointed to the commission it's been uh, a lot of work and a long haul and i just really appreciate all of your work to make it happen thank you any other comments from commissioners looks like commissioner bertrand wanted to speak again okay uh briefly no is there yeah, anybody I'm, else? yes anybody other commissioner would like i do to want speak? to speak okay yeah, um, I forgot to uh, thank Grace Bakes, uh, Blakesley because um, the um, presentation helped me greatly understand all the different uh, parcels and the purpose of the different parcels that we're going to be voting on. And so thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, okay. now any other commissioner would like to address this? Uh, I would like to say a few words myself. Um, 
I cringe at the uh, phrase eminent domain in general, uh, but um, I think that um, I, I've been a long time supporter of the Monterey Bay Scenic Trail and the California Coastal Trail. Uh, I do not think this is the thing that we're going to, uh, this is not a, an issue about supporting the train up the Davenport at this point. Uh, we are going to go through procedures and negotiations with the property owners and to see what comes of it. So um, I, I know that there's others that say, well, when in the heck are you going to stop if you're going to do it in the future? Um, and I think, it, like I said, it's unfortunate this wasn't addressed, but understandable it wasn't addressed initially years ago uh, for the, the what is needed uh, under our circumstances of a trail uh, to go alongside the uh, rail line. But I do not think this commits us to a rail line to Davenport. I'm not seeing it that way, but I, it allows us to have negotiations and continue with the aspects of a, of a trail between, uh, well, the seven mile line, I believe it's seven miles. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to support this, but I do not wanted to uh, indicate that I support uh, a train uh, going from Santa Cruz to Davenport at this point. That's still an issue that's to be decided. So um, I think if, um, I, I don't know that any other commissioners would like to make a brief comment, but Mr. Schifrin wanted to, uh, was ready to make a motion some time ago before the commissioners um, and uh, would entertain any, uh, would just not so much comments, but uh, if we have to take these uh, attachments one through five independently, uh, according to our council. So I would uh, offer the, uh, the floor to Mr. Schifrin, who was ready to make a motion uh, about a half an hour ago or so. And I'm going to make a motion, but I uh, I can't resist making a few comments first, if you'll permit me. <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> First of all, I want to uh, say, say in, in character for sure um, that I that Commissioner Johnson enunciated a principle that's very important to me, and I think it really underlies uh, what the commission has been doing over the last several years, and that's the notion of the greatest good for the greatest number. What is the benefit to the public? And I think preserving the rail line for both the trail and the potentially a public tra transit does do that. And that's one of the reasons why I support it because it does increase options for the greatest number in the long term. That doesn't mean any of it's gonna be easy or any of it's gonna, or all of it's gonna end up being feasible, but that's the operating principle I think that's very important. Um, the idea that we're just concentrating on this project instead of all the other projects doesn't really make sense to me. We're doing this project now because we were lucky enough to get a major federal grant to allow us to do this project. And we're pursuing other uh, segments of the trail as funding becomes possible. As you, the commission knows, uh, there's a segment under construction at this point in the city. Um, we're also doing a alternatives analysis to look at uh, what the heck, we're, what's, what's gonna happen with the rail line, if anything. So I think it's important to uh, to recognize that this is all part of carrying out the master plan that the commission adopted, um, that um, we're, 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 we're doing the projects as we can, and it's, uh, it's, it's naive to think it all could be done at once. There are those who support this project, there are those who oppose it, there is those who support other projects under Measure D, uh, like the uh, ra uh, highway projects. And there are those who feel that we're spending too much time concentrating on the highway projects. So different people have priorities. This is a project that I think it's, um, it's finally moving forward in a, in a uh, effective way. And so I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, resolu resolution of necessity for in attachment one. Okay, second. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Schifrin and a second by Mr. Bertrand. And I think um, Mr. Council could, uh, we'll go through the roll on number one, but I will offer uh, Mr. Schifrin and Bertrand to make motions on each of these. And could we um, just take them uh, in general or do we have to call the roll for each one of the five? Um, Mr. Chairman, I would recommend uh, that you call the roll for each of the five so that okay. again, it's creating a separate record for each one. Very well, very well. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second 
to uh, approve the first number one of five attachments. Uh, please call the roll. Commissioner Bertrand? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. What's the count on that then? Is that what, 10 to 1? One, one? No. Yeah, 1 no, uh, Johnson no. And how many were, I mean, I know it's, what is it, 10? That motion passes. 11, um, 11 yeses. 11 to 1? Yes. I make a motion to approve a, resolu a resolution of necessity and attachment number 2. I'll second. second. No, sorry, Patrick, second. No, it was Aurelio. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Brown? Aye. And Commissioner Bertrand? Three. 11 to 1. I'd move a resolution of necessity in attachment number three. A second. The chair, if I may, the, uh, yeah, we just know for the record that the commission did receive updated attachments for some of the ocean shore resolutions. And so uh, with the consent of Commissioner Shipper and these motions related to the ocean shore property would include the latest attachments. It's fine with the maker of the motion. Commission alternate Lynn. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. 11 to 1. I would move a uh, resolution of necessity uh, in attachment number four with the updated information. I'll second. Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. 11 to 1. Before I make the motion to um, uh, approve uh, resolution of necessity in, the, uh, in attachment 5, I also wanted to add my thanks for staff for all the work they've done on this project and will have to continue to do uh, to keep moving it forward uh, through the rest of the steps to construction. So I do move uh, a resolution of necessity number five with the uh, updated material. I'll second it. Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? No. 
Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Yes. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. And Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. 11 to 1. Okay, thank you. That concludes our discussion on item number 17, the public hearing. Uh, we will return to the regular agenda on uh, item number 14, um, commissioner reports. Does any, do any commissioners have an oral report that they would like to uh, address the commission? Seeing none, uh, we will move to the number, item number 15, the director's report, an oral report from uh, executive director Guy Preston. Thank you, Chair McPherson and commissioners. Um, I have several project updates. I'll try to go fast. I know we have a long agenda today and have been going long already. Um, the Highway 1 Improvement Project from State Park to Bay Porter, planning to release the draft environmental impact report um, uh, later this month. Um, there will be a 45-day public review period. Um, we will have an announcement shortly. I'll update the commission at the December meeting. But I just wanted people to be aware that we're moving forward with that Highway 1 project. Um, the uh, MBSST Segment 5, um, the environmental assessment for the North Coast Rail Trail project is open for public review and comment until November 25th. Um, there's a link on my uh, uh, director's report as well as on our website um, uh, for the public to make comment on that. Um, as was mentioned in the uh, recently completed uh, uh, Ron hearings, the RTC certified the CEQA document, uh, the EIR in March of 2019. This is the federal equi equivalent under the uh, National Environmental Policy Act. Um, segment seven, phase one of the MBSST project um, uh, construction is moving along just wonderfully. I was out there uh, recently and took a look at some of the improvements and um, the, the city is just doing a, a, a great job in getting this completed. We think it's going to be completed early in December. Um, we're hoping to, to have a, uh, a rib, uh, ribbon cutting ceremony virtually, and um, uh, I will have announcements as the actual date um, arise at the next RTC meeting. Um, the transit corridor alternatives analysis, um, open house is now scheduled for November 6th to 27th. Um, RTC invites the public um, to provide input for milestone three of the study. Um, uh, through an online open house um, November 6th through 27th. Um, we performed a performance analysis on the short list of four alternatives. Community members will be able to review the results and submit comments through the um, open house. In addition, the uh, TCA team has scheduled live chat sessions on November 12th and 18th. Um, and there's a link on my um, director's report and on our website for these um, events. Um, the Santa Cruz Branch rail line um, recently completed some storm damage construction work at sites one and two. Um, I provided some photos in my director's report to show the uh, wonderful progress we, we have made in, in getting the rail line repaired. Um, there's one other um, uh, thing I need to mention. Um, Chair McPherson has let me know that he's uh, formed a subcommittee to make a recommendation for our next chair and vice chair. It is that time of the year. Um, he wanted to remind um, uh, prospective candidates uh, that um, uh, um, Chair McPherson and I made it a made it a regular commitment to have breakfast uh, at um, at El Palomar. Uh, we both always ordered uh, huevos rancheros, and um, and uh, my next chair, um, I, I I look forward to really getting an opportunity to know you. Um, Chair McPherson and I got to know each other real well um, over breakfast when we went over the agendas prior to these meetings. So um, the subcommittee is made up of um, uh, Commissioners Bachorf and Commissioners Kaufman Gomez, and they'll be making a recommendation for you to consider at the next RTC meeting. And that concludes my director's report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Um, we will move to uh, item number 16, uh, the Caltrans report. And uh, I don't know who is, might address us on that. Is there anybody that's been patient enough from Caltrans to uh, stick with us um, to give a report? Yes, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Scott Eads with Caltrans here for the district director. Thank you. Um, as you, yeah, as you probably remember, I am the um, deputy district director for transportation planning and local assistance and environmental stewardship. I have just a few items for you today, informational items. Uh, the first is that Caltrans is hosting an innovation expo, first ever for us. It's a virtual event. Uh, November 16th through 20th, and it's um, focusing on the, our organization's top five priorities, safety, mobility, innovation, efficiency, and partnerships. And both Caltrans and external partners will be presenting information and giving demonstrations, and um, all of it will be available online after the event. It's free. You do need to register ahead of time, um, and you can at caltransinnovationexpo.com. See me if you have any questions or uh, want to want help registering. Second item is um, that the kind of a, a big deal: the um, Monterey County Transit Operations uh, for Monterey Salinas Transit has been um, given a 8.4 million dollar loan through the TIFIA program, Transportation Infrastructure and Innovation Act. It's a federal program that gives low interest loans for transportation projects. This will help them finance a 14,000 foot uh, square foot South County operations and maintenance facility in King City. So uh, good news for MST. And then the last thing I just wanted to highlight in the interest of time is um, Caltrans is continuing litter removal. Um, we had to stop there for a while um, because of um, concerns with the COVID um, pandemic and making sure we had operations protocols in place. We've resumed that effort since June. Um, and this also includes our Adopt a Highway and Special People program um, where we're um, removing litter from the roadside. And last year's Caltrans with its partners collected 287,000 cubic yards of litter from California's highways enough to fill up more than 18,000 garbage trucks. So unfortunately it's a continuing problem and we're continuing to tackle it, uh, working with CHP also to um, work on enforcement activities to try to stop people from littering in the first place. That's all I have, happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Eats. I, uh, I wanted to say thank you to Caltrans. Um, it's noticeable in each of our cities and uh, the unincorporated area in our districts in the county, about how much work is going on with uh, Caltrans and uh, overlays on the highways and so forth. And people wanna know why can't you do the overlays and striping right away, but you know, we'll just wait two or three days and it'll get done. Uh, so uh, once we let people know you can't do it uh, all in one day, that, that's been uh, very well received. Um, uh, I wanted to thank uh, you know, the, the state legislature for passing Senate Bill 1 and for the voters uh, letting that stand and in a subsequent election. And then also for the, the people who passed measure D in Santa Cruz County, because this has been very important for us to have cooperative projects at the state. Um, thank you very much for your patience and waiting. Uh, is there are any comments uh, that related to uh, state highways? Oh, Mr. Preston, did you have something? Yes, just real quickly, I wanted to uh, give a plug to Sarah Christensen, RTC's engineer, who will be doing a presentation at the Innovation Expo that um, Commissioner Eads mentioned. Um, that presentation will be on our Highway 1 bus on shoulder um, pro projects. Okay. Any other comments from commissioners on uh, projects that are being undertaken by the by Caltrans, by the state? Commissioner Caput. Oh, Commissioner Caput. Mr. Caput. If I could make a quick comment, just uh, thank you to uh, Caltrans for the work they're doing now at uh, uh, Highway 152 and Marchant Street by the Watsonville High School. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, anyone else make a short comment directed to Caltrans Estate? We do have public comments. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Bernassa? Yes, I, I would like to thank Scott and Caltrans. I contacted them about three weeks ago about the trestle and the railing that's hanging over the freeway. And not, not only am I concerned, but there are dozens of people in Aptos that are concerned. I posted it on Nextdoor and got all kinds of responses. 
I, uh, Scott put out a maintenance review with Cal, with the, his organization, Caltrans, and they came down a couple of days later and looked at it. They can't do anything about it. RTC has to do it. Please make that, it's a threat. People are worried about it. They're taking their eyes off the car in front of them because they're looking to see if that thing's gonna fall on them. So please do something about that. Thank you. Thank you. We do not have any other hands. Okay. We will um, go to, we've already had a public hearing on 17 and the update from Watsonville on 18. So um, the legislative uh, updates, uh, Rachel Marconi, Marconi will uh, transportation, senior transportation planner and um, Chris Gillio. I don't know. I think he's back in DC. I don't know that he's here. Uh, Ms. Marconi. Good morning, Commissioners. Rachel Morconi of your staff. Oh, I apologize for the background. I realize it's still set for a Halloween party we had with our sister agencies last week where I was uh, Snow White. So I apologize <laughs> for that. My Zoom schedules are not quite uh, on par to get rid of it really quickly. But um, I'll just make this very brief. We do have Chris Giglio, our federal legislative assistant with, with us this morning who will provide an update on federal activities in 2020. On the state level, um, as you may have noted, the legislature was on break a significant portion of the session because of COVID and really focused all of their efforts on um, COVID relief and, and fire um, relief this session. And so they ended their legislative session a little bit early and passed about 70% um, fewer bills than in years past. And so on the transportation level, um, they were also very limited to the most significant transportation bills really did focus on um, reacting to COVID, providing some relief for transit agencies, um, expediting delivery of projects as, as we head forward towards economic recovery and um, making it possible to have more virtual meetings like this where that we can make sure to continue to encourage the public to participate um, in transportation decisions. Um, looking forward to 2021, we are just starting the process of updating our legislative program. And I would like to invite commissioners um, by mid-December to send Guy or I any um, specific issues that you think you would like the commission to consider and highlight in 2021. We will again be focused in 2021 on economic recovery, stabilizing transportation funding, um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and um, promoting programs that will um, allow us to um, implement the priority projects of this board and our community. So with that, I'd like to just hand it over to um, Chris Julia. Um, who's over in Washington, D.C. and joining us virtually. Uh, over to you, Chris. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, uh, thanks uh, also, uh, Mr. Preston, commissioners, uh, for allowing me to come virtually. Wish I were there in person, uh, but uh, wanted to give you a quick update on, on uh, what's going on here in Washington, D.C., at least uh, you know, uh, maybe a little bit in the short term, a little bit in the long term. I know you've got a long agenda, so I'll, I'll keep it short. There was a little memo. Uh, in your packet that you could uh, refer to as well. Uh, start at 30,000 feet. Uh, we don't know uh, the uh, uh, the results yet of the presidential election, but I can say that uh, uh, that the impacts on the Department of Transportation would would be different given uh, given you know who it is. If the if the president is reelected, you would expect that uh, Elaine Chao, the current uh, Department of Transportation Secretary, would stay on her job for at least uh, uh, part of this uh, next term, uh, and the department would continue a uh, a, a path that it's been going on in, in recent years uh, in trying to support uh, rural uh, projects. It's it's been uh, it's been something that DOT has slowly been doing over the last four years. Uh, and as a matter of fact, in the the Caltrans report, uh, the, the uh, uh, transit facility that Mr. Eads discussed uh, for Monterey Salinas Transit is a result of uh, expedited uh, processes for this. A uh, very major loan program at DOT that uh, kept a lot of rural and smaller projects out of it. 
Uh, and so that this is it's, it's one of the first transit projects in the country that this loan project was funded. So, um, so we would expect that uh, to continue. Uh, if uh, if Vice President Biden is elected, we would expect uh, probably a different uh, a different direction uh, at DOT. Um, if I had to guess who the transportation secretary would be, I'd look downstate to uh, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, who probably would, uh, if he wants it, could have it. Uh, and uh, and we would probably see a return to um, sort of more mo uh, uh, a focus on more multimodal projects. And I'll give you a quick example: the largest discretionary program at uh, at DOT competitive program, or one of the largest. It's called the Build Program. It's about a billion dollars each year. It was created in the Recovery Act of 2009, uh, and was meant to to sort of handle multimodal, multi-jurisdictional, large-scale projects. Uh, under this administration, uh, they changed the name of the program from TIGER to BUILD, all goofy acronyms, and uh, and have mostly funded sort of rural road projects. So I would expect these sort of discretionary decisions in a Biden administration to sort of even out a little bit more uh, with regard to that. As far as what needs to be done between now and the end of the year, the only thing that Congress needs to do is pass a FY 2021 budget, and that includes the budget for the Department of Transportation. They need to try to do that before December 11th, which is where we've got uh, legislation that's keeping the doors open to the government uh, until December 11th, and, uh, and Congress is hopeful uh, that they can, they can pass a 2021 budget. Uh, the, the budget for the Department of Transportation, at least uh, as approved by the House of Representatives, looks pretty good. Increases for highway and transit programs. Uh, the Senate hasn't done anything on their end, but uh, in the past, they've been supportive of, of, uh, of, an, of increases uh, to those programs. Uh, so that needs to be done. The other thing that needs to potentially needs to be done is COVID relief. Uh, uh, both sides want to do some sort of COVID relief. Uh, you elected officials in the crowd here would be very interested. Sort of the the major sticking point of, uh, right now to a to a deal is uh, is aid to direct aid to state and local governments. Uh, Speaker Pelosi has been insisting on that. The White House and Senate Republicans don't want that. Um, after the election, I think there'll be more negotiation going on. We may see two different packages uh, done, sort of low hanging fruit done before the end of the year. And then next year, sort of uh, taking another uh, bite at that COVID relief apple. As far as transportation is concerned, uh, there has not been a lot of uh, interest in Congress to provide more money for highway programs, federal highway programs, uh, but uh, federal transit programs, on the other hand, are expected to get uh, a little bit more funding as uh, might uh, Amtrak uh, in, with regard to that. Uh, next year, uh, Congress is going to need to uh, reauthorize the 2015 FAST Act. The FAST Act is another, uh, you know, federal government acronym. Uh, it's basically the uh, legislation that authorizes funding for federal highway and transit and rail projects. It's usually a five or six year bill that Congress passes. Um, they were not able to extend it when it expired on on September 30th of this year. So it's been extended by one year to September 30th, 2021. Earlier this year, the House passed its version of a five-year, $500 billion Fast Act reauthorization. Uh, that $500 billion represented about a, almost a 30% increase for highway programs and uh, over a 50% increase uh, for transit programs. The Senate uh, did not take that up. And one of the big reasons the Senate didn't take it up is because paying for that is going to be uh, difficult. Right now, the, uh, the funds that are coming into the Federal Highway Trust Fund that pay for these programs uh, are lagging, as everybody knows. Uh, and so estimates are that, uh, that Congress needs to find an additional $140 billion in order to fully fund that $500 billion proposal. So uh, again, sort of depending on how things go with regard to the makeup of the Senate next year and who's in the administration, well, there will be uh, discussions over how to um, how to pay for uh, this kind of bill. Uh, you know, of course, a gas tax increase is something that they'll talk about. Uh, also talk about other ways to, to do things uh, such as uh, the vehicle miles traveled um, you know, uh, way of, of doing things. It's not doesn't seem to be fully baked yet on the on the federal level, at least. Um, but that'll be uh, that'll be uh, among the, the uh, discussion next year. Uh, 
uh, with regard to fast track. So I will cut it short there, but happy to answer any other questions if anything I missed or if uh, anybody has anything else they want to talk about. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your representation of uh, the commission of the county. And uh, the, I think we've been very successful comparatively uh, and uh, appreciate your efforts very much. Um, and, and the members of uh, our con congressional delegation have been fantastic, as I think is evidenced by some of the programs you mentioned. Uh, are there any comments from uh, the uh, commissioners? Commissioner Reed. Yeah, I have a question for you, Chris. Um, I'm concerned here locally um, about uh, some of the aftermath of our federally designated disasters regarding the forest fires and the expected associated debris flows that we may see. Um, and if the, it's my understanding from a FEMA standpoint and funding standpoint that if a debris flow occurs and damages state highways or perhaps local roads, that if that specific event is not designated as a disaster, that we as a local jurisdiction would be on the hook for the entire repair bill. And I didn't know if as forest fires are becoming more common and ancillary or secondary events associated with those event, those disasters are occurring, if FEMA is looking at different funding strategies or if there's ever been any conversation legislatively to address that, to couple those things since they are related, but they're not the same federal disaster so that local or local municipalities and communities can get federal assistance on essentially the out, you know, a, a negative impact from another federally designated disaster. Right, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And it is something that folks uh, I know in Congress think about a lot and try to legislate with not a lot of success. You know, sort of FEMA's, you know, job is to sort of look at these requests for reimbursements and try to figure out a way to deny them, right? Because they don't have enough money uh, to, to handle it all. And so, but I, but I do know that, that uh, that you know, sort of the overall issue of climate change was is something Rachel and I talked about recently. She inquired about uh, the you know the air quality problems that that result as a result of wildfires, and is there any way that you know that that we can access you know funds for that sort of thing? And that again, you know, if you brought that up to FEMA, they would you know they would get very very nervous because again they've got they've got limited resources like everyone else. But that's part of the discussion. And I, but I but I'm not sure again if if Congress is ready to, to go that far. And so what that brings us to is sort of those individual fights. Uh, and again, we've got a good congressional delegation, so that helps to go to FEMA, to go to the White House, to go to whatever is needed to get that specific declaration to help us out. Uh, Mr. Bertrand. Yeah, I, um, Chris, I appreciate your background. I don't know if you're from San Francisco. I have a question no. for you. I'm not sure right. it's appropriate. Um, so one of the things that concerns me is um, clearing brush and trees that might be of fire danger near roads. I noticed we do that on Highway 17 here and good work there. But um, a good example here is San Lorenzo Valley. Uh, the fire came to the roads like Highway 9 and crossed over. And so there's several problems there. And one of the main ones is people getting out and people that are fighting fires getting in. And I don't know if um, Caltrans or anyone, you know, can help us in that regard, but it seems to me from public safety for people who may be trying to get out, getting in to fight the fires, and also the idea of um, preventing fires crossing the road. So if that's something you could talk about. Yeah, I could probably talk a little bit about, I know that, um, uh, you know, again, that uh, uh, when FEMA funds come into a, a state, the state has to spend a certain percentage on hazard mitigation type of projects. And so this sounds like that might be one, right? You know, so sort of, you know, being able to prevent that uh, from happening if, uh, if, if there are, um, if there are other fires. And, uh, you know, and again, you know, to continue to think about you know, back in 2017, we had these horrible storms and we're still working with, with uh, FEMA and the Department of Transportation to get reimbursed for a lot of that, that road work. And uh, Chairman McPherson uh, has worked really hard on that, uh, among others. So, um, 
Yeah, I, so I think theme that, is a good option. I, you know, good. they may be. It, you know, certainly it, it doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't hurt to inquire uh, with Cal OES or, or FEMA uh, on those sorts of issues. Just to Could that be on done? That, I'll... So, oh, sorry, um, Rachel. Sure, sure, sorry. Sorry, no problem. Just to piggyback on that, Commissioner Bertram, during the Highway 9 Complete Streets Corridor plan for San Lorenzo Valley, we did also discuss the need for um, possibly a more comprehensive evacuation planning effort. And I know Commissioner McPherson has discussed this with our local OES um, folks in the past. Caltrans does have a planning grant that um, we're going to talk about if with OES if that would be something that they might want to pursue as well. There have been other regions in the state that have utilized that Caltrans planning um, funding for um, hazard mitigation and evacuation planning as well as adaptation planning and um, resiliency planning for, for climate change. So that's definitely something that's on the radar. Okay, I'd be interested in that and Maybe if this would be a public partnership type thing where property owners could do it and contract out or something like that. But that's not the discussion now, but I am interested in this. Having lived in rural areas before, I, I know a great fear for getting out. I was up in San Lorenzo Valley, for instance, and other areas. Getting out fire or any other kind of natural disaster is, is extremely of concern to residents. Any other comments from the commissioners? Okay, it's a moving target, so to speak, and what's gonna, what's gonna come in the future, but um, thank you for that presentation, Chris. Uh, we'd love to have you here in our county again and look forward to that in the very near future, but uh, thank you for your great work in uh, the DC for us. I wanna, I, and as a spinoff, I just wanna thank our congressional representatives too. They've been great and getting some things done for us, uh, especially uh, Congresswoman Eshoo and Congressman Panetta. They've been just great for us. Uh, they, when we ever address them, they they listen. And so, and they've been very, very uh, proactive in trying to do some things for us. I think these upcoming things about debris flow and all are, are very good uh, questions to ask and uh, that need to be addressed because I, I know it doesn't just affect our county and, uh, I hope we can move forward and getting something uh, significant done in that regard in the near future. We have public comment, Commissioner McPherson. Okay. Uh, Brian Peoples. Yeah, can you, can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Hi, Brian Peoples with uh, Trail Now. You know, I've been involved with this organization probably for over 20 years. And, you know, you guys all get to thank Rachel there for bringing me in. So um, whenever you get a chance, thank her. Um, if you get tired of me, um, our organization, you know, is thousands of supporters in, in Santa Cruz County. Um, you know, we, we supported Measure D, D as a PAC. And we, again, supported Measure L and Measure, and we were PAC this election and we've been successful. So we're a big supporter of this organization, right? I'm a, I, I personally have been in transportation. I actually wrote a Senate bill at the state level to give employers a tax credit uh, to give to their employees using federal, federal uh, leveraging the federal commuter check. I don't know if that still exists or not, to be honest with you. Anyway, so I believe in this organization. So I wanna, and, and, and I've seen, a lot of commissioners come and go. I, I, and I'll, I'm actually, I think I've been here longer than all of you, except for Rachel. Um, so, I'm, and we're gonna see more. Um, and I'm hoping that our people continue to get expertise. I, you know, Mr. Gonzalez's comment that we're gonna have a commuter train from Davenport is a little concerning, but actually what was more concerning was his racial indication to me that a white elitist, I want this for you to be careful making those kind of statements. You're not, if you were white, if Bruce said that to me, okay, but you're not white and you call me a white elitist? Are you kidding me? We don't need that kind of communication on this board. That's unacceptable. Um, I'm, I'm so irritated that you said that, that you were racist like that. So I expect an apology and I want this, I don't want that to, I, I come here for 20 years. So please, 
be respectful. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mernaka? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Chris, uh, I'm also a San Francisco and a Cow Hollow North Beach boy. So uh, I wanna thank you for what you're doing. I, I would like to also uh, suggest and get your opinion uh, the Senate's going to stay controlled by the Republicans. Are they going to stop some of these things that the Democrats would like to do? And uh, also, <clears throat> do you think that there is going to be more auditing on projects to make sure that they're increasing productivity since our big uh, push now is to get over unemployment? And that means uh, creating jobs, not just in the short term, but in the long term. And of course, that's one of the great advantages of this new program with the county of, of Santa Cruz and uh, regarding air, air. So anyway, I wanna thank you. And if you could uh, uh, tell me also if what the status is on the federal financing of the train between San Francisco and Los Angeles. After all, Mr. Giglio, I don't know if you have a crystal ball there to tell us what the new federal legislation is gonna be aside from your um, overall report. So don't feel obligated to do that. I don't know, uh, just a, a couple words. I don't know if San Francisco to LA, if you, I don't know if you can say it's in the in the works or whatever, but we wanna move on. Yeah, high-speed rail, uh, at least on the federal level, you know, all, all quiet on that front. Uh, the, the Trump administration certainly has not wanted to spend any money on that. And uh, it's, been, it's been several years since even uh, the Obama administration sent, sent uh, any money on that. So I think that, that uh, at least the federal piece on that is probably uh, is not good. Uh, I think that, oh, I shouldn't say not good, not there. Uh, uh, right now with, the, with that high-speed rail. With regard to the Senate, I think that uh, on transportation issues, uh, whether the Senate is Democrat or Republican, it's gonna be pretty close. Uh, and I think they're gonna be willing to negotiate. Uh, infrastructure seems to be something that uh, both sides uh, seem to be willing to, to negotiate on. So I, I can see something like that uh, occurring next year. And then you talked about auditing uh, projects. Congress usually doesn't provide enough money for these projects to do sort of uh, 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 really hard look backs. You know, there's certainly some funding in there to do that, but uh, um, uh, my impression is that that there's not a, there's, there won't be, with, with uh, funding so uh, tough to come by, uh, I don't think that they'll, that they'll put a lot of money into that sort of thing. I agree. I, in my sense of it, and talking, discussing with some legislators, um, uh, members of Congress, if there's any place where there can be some uh, agreement, it'll be in uh, related to transportation. Yeah, that's probably the best shot of anything. Uh, Mr. Schifrin, I think, did you have a question? Um, I guess I was concerned about uh, the testimony that had nothing to do with uh, this item and that attacked personally one of the members of this commission. Uh, I would hope that that would be um, pre prevented from happening in the future. I don't think it's uh, legitimate for any of us and members of the public as well to individually attack a member of this commission, especially uh, to engage in the kind of name calling that that um, testimony involved. So I just didn't wanna let that pass um, without uh, expressing my uh, disagreement with that uh, kind of activity. Okay. All right. We don't want to have a big take. Thank you, Mr. Uh, anything else that commissioners would like to uh, ask Mr. Giglio? Okay. I think, thank you very much. And, uh, I, I obviously you're in San Francisco, so have a nice flight back. Uh, yeah, no, I, I wish I was in San Francisco. Just, just my, <laughs> you know, the the best background I could find. I uh, you, you don't want to see what's behind me right now. It's I not got pretty. It. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Thank you very much, Mr. Giglio. Your efforts are very much appreciated. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Take care. All right. Uh, we will go to uh, amendments. Uh, item number twenty: amendments to the fiscal year uh, 2021 budget and work program. Tracy New, the Director of Budget and Finance, will uh, give that report. 
Good morning, commissioners. Um, on June 29, 2020, the RTC revised revenue projections to address potential economic impacts on transportation and Measure D revenue. Since then, economic indicators, including jobs, unemployment, housing, and spending show California's economy started to recover in May and has continued. TDA cash receipts for July through October are 20% higher than budgeted and 4.9% higher than the same period last year. Measure D is 7.3% higher, and this increase can be largely attributed to a new tax generated since the passing of AB 147 to include out-of-state online purchases um, effective October 2019. The State Controller's Office um, August 2020 estimate for state transit assistance are based on June 2020 estimates included in the state budget. Actuals are expected to be higher based on recent trends. Um, actual revenues in 2021 will depend on the pandemic, while the FY 2021 budget adopted on, on June 29, 2020 attempted to reflect the potential impacts um, of COVID-19. The projections were based on what we knew at the time. The ultimate effect will depend on the state and public's responses to the pandemic. Presented to this commission is the fiscal year 2020-21 budget reflecting the August 2020 State Controller's Office revised estimates for STA and state of good repair revenue allocations to the RTC and Metro. The Measure D five-year plans adopted at the September 3rd, 2020 RTC meeting and incorporating information from prior year end balances and updated estimates. The rail budget includes an increase of $2.7 million for additional sites moving into the construction phase to complete the repairs from the 2017 storm damage. To manage cash flow, the RTC requests reimbursement from Cal OES and FEMA regularly. Um, the Budget and Personnel Committee recommend the Commission approve the fiscal year 2020-2021 amended budget as proposed. Um, and included in this packet is a revised salary schedule. Um, it is an administrative update only and does not um, change compensation to any classification. And with that, I conclude my report and would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Um, any uh, questions from the commission? Commissioner Alternate Reed. Yeah, just a quick comment. Um, I think uh, as we start to move through this calendar and fiscal year and into future fiscal years and calendar years and hopefully come out of the COVID crisis. For revenue streams that have been COVID impacted, I think it would be helpful when we start reviewing budget materials that we don't just have the COVID impacted year as a comparison, but the prior year that would have been more normal so that as we're reviewing revenue streams and we're seeing how those revenue streams are changing, the delta that we're looking at isn't isn't uh, skewed by that COVID impact. So it's just a, a content presentation note that I was thinking about in reviewing these materials. Yeah, so in essence, yeah, just get a consistent uh, um, normal um, presentation, but uh, maybe somehow put a footnote that uh, points out COVID-19 or the COVID years or year, hopefully only year, uh, good point, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? I think that's, um, I just see this does need to, we need to adopt a resolution uh, for the- uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner McPherson, we do have um, uh, input from community. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, who who would like to address? Well, this is Ben Bernatze again. Uh, excuse me, I'm a forensic accountant, so I like to dig into the details. So I'm looking at the schedule of D, attachment 22.8 at the end, which has to do with the forecast of what you're going to spend by highway projects. And again, I sent all commissioners plus staff uh, plus other people my opinion on putting off segment 12. That's a $40 million a mile project and maybe not necessary. So I want you to consider that. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because I already sent you uh, the opinion. It's not just my opinion, it's the opinion of a group of us, in, a growing group of us in the APTA Seascape Seaview area. So thank you. Thank you. We do not have any other hands up, Commissioner. I'll move the rec uh, the staff recommendation to approve the budget amendment. I'll second it. Okay, uh, 
Mr. Chair, can I have a motion uh, to second? Uh, please call the roll. Commissioner Bertrand. I agree. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Caput. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern. Aye. Commission Alternate Reed. Aye. Commissioner Caput. Aye. Commissioner McPherson. Aye. Commissioner Bator. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. And Commission Alternate Lynn. Aye. That passes unanimously. We will uh, move on to item number um, um, 21, the organizational assessment uh, consultant contract. Uh, Mr. Preston. Thank you, commissioners. Um, you may remember um, last year I uh, brought this up several times as part of my director's report. Um, I, I discussed um, the fact that the the RTC has uh, last went an organization last underwent an organizational assessment back in 2006. Um, several things have happened um, since then. Um, uh, the RTC acquired the branch rail line um, in 2012. Um, uh, significant responsibilities were taken on by the commission as a result of that purchase. Um, also, in 2016, RTC passed Measure D, um, which uh, made us a self-help county with a dedicated um, um, revenue source for, uh, for local transportation projects. Um, included in that measure is um, RTC serving as um, the regional agency to deliver a lot of these projects. Um, that has created uh, significant work for the commission um, in terms of developing and delivering these projects. Um, uh, significant contracting has gone in, in place. I think you've seen um, our agendas of, as of late, um, how many contracts we're doing. That's been a, a significant strain on our administrative and financial services. Um, at this point, we uh, have issued a, a request for proposals and received um, uh, three um, responses, interviewed two firms um, and selected a, a firm to perform the organizational assessment. Um, the, the amount um, is uh, $36,445. They'll do a full engagement survey of staff, um, provide us with recommendations um, and an implementation plan moving forward. So with that, um, I uh, recommend that the commission authorize me to um, uh, enter into an agreement with the uh, uh, selected um, consulting firm, um, and that is Regional Government Services, uh, to perform an organizational assessment of the RTC for an amount not to exceed $36,445. Thank you. Um, questions from the commission? These bastards. Um, uh, anything from the public? I do not see any hands up, Commissioner. Okay. Very well. The staff recommendation. Uh, second. Second. Oh. Second, Mr. Bertrand. A motion by Mr. Schifrin to move the staff recommendation to regional governor services for 36400 not to exceed 36445 Uh Please call the roll. Commissioner Bertrand. I agree. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Caput? Yes. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Mulhern? Aye. Commission Alternate Reed? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. And Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. Unanimous. <laughs> Unanimous vote on item number 21. We will now move to item number 22, the Highway 1 Bay Corridor State Park Auxiliary Lane and Bush on Shoulder Project contract amendment with Mark Thomas and Company. 
for the final design phase. Uh, Ms. Sarah Christensen, will, our senior transportation planner, will make a presentation. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Sarah Christensen. I am the RTC staff in charge of the Highway 1 Corridor Investment Program. Uh, the purpose of today's item, uh, we would like to get the final design phase of this project going. It's the project uh, on Highway 1 between the Bay Porter Interchange and the State Park Drive Interchange. Um, I request uh, that the commission approve a resolution authorizing a contract amendment with the professional engineering services consultant, Mark Thomas, and approve an amendment to the Measure D five-year plan for the Highway Corridors Program. So I'm gonna give a quick status update on the program. We have three projects currently. I'm gonna give uh, some details and description about this specific project, the status of this project, uh, the, review the staff recommendation, and then talk a little bit about next steps. So as you are aware, we have three active projects on Highway 1, the first being the Highway 1 Auxiliary Lanes and Bus on Shoulder project between the 41st Avenue Interchange and the SoCal Drive Interchange. That project is uh, very close to being construction ready and will begin construction next year pending availability of funds for construction. The next project down the corridor um, going from north to south is the uh, project of uh, note today. It's between Bay Porter Interchange and the State Park Drive Interchange. Uh, and the third and final project uh, that's currently active is the uh, State Park to Freedom Boulevard project. That project proposes auxiliary lanes and bus on shoulder improvements between the State Park Drive Interchange and the Freedom Boulevard Interchange. We went through a scoping process. The project is somewhat early in the environmental phase um, and the project includes replacing two railroad bridges and a mile and a quarter of the coastal rail trail as well. So moving on to the uh, details of the Bay Porter to State Park project. This project proposes auxiliary lanes between the Bay Porter interchange and the park interchange as well as uh, from park to state park drive interchanges. Uh, it extends the bus on shoulder facility by three miles, replaces the Capitola Avenue overcrossing, and constructs a new pedestrian and bicycle overcrossing at Mar Vista Drive in Aptos. The current status of the project, uh, we awarded the uh, professional engineering services contract to Mark Thomas back in June of 2019. That was for the preliminary engineering and environmental components of the project. Um, the environmental review for this project will begin this month. Our current schedule, um, our current schedule shows the draft environmental document being posted on November 17th and the comment period will be open through the second week of January. So that's actually a 55 day review period, more than the um, required 45 days uh, required by CEQA. As you are also aware, we submitted a grant application earlier this year um, for SB1 funds and that grant, if successful, would fully fund construction of this project. CTC staff recommendations are expected in mid-November and the program into action is scheduled for December of this year. We would like to kick off the final design component of this project to expedite the schedule and have the project construction ready sooner, uh, which is planned for the end of 2022 and have construction begin in 2023. And that would be consistent with our grant application. Uh, the implementing agency for this project uh, for the final design phase and the right-of-way phase, we discussed, um, went back and forth between Caltrans and the RTC and that at the end, the PDT recommends that the RTC continue on as the implementing agency. This provides a smooth transition into the uh, final design phase and is consistent with the previous project, um, which is the 41st to SoCal um, project which has been successful in the delivery. Um, so 
what we are recommending is that the RTC continue as the implementing agency for final design and the right-of-way phases. Uh, in doing so, um, it would be required to amend the professional engineering services contract with Mark Thomas, uh, and the amount of the amount of the amendment would be four million nine hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred and ninety seven dollars. This amount um, is supported by the staff's independent cost estimate for the work. It is quite a sizable project with multiple structures and walls and retaining walls, sound walls. Um, it's a it's a large project. So. Um, with that, I request that the commission approve the attached resolution um, to amend the consultant contract and uh, amend the five-year plan for the highway program of Measure D. The next steps, um, assuming the commission approves staff recommendation, would be um, to negotiate a Caltrans co-op for the final design and right-of-way components. Uh, and then we would also um, begin negotiations on a cooperative agreement with the County of Santa Cruz, and that would be um, specifically for right-of-way support services for the project. And this is um, consistent with the arrangement we have for the 41st to SoCal project, um, which has been successful to date in um, delivering the right-of-way component of the project. Um, so with that, I could take any uh, questions from commissioners. Thank you. It's been very active. It's been very busy. Thank you very much. Um, any questions from the commissioners? No questions. Uh, uh, any questions from the public? Yes, we do. Um, Mr. Brian Peoples. Okay. Mr. Peoples. Hi, this is Brian Peoples for Trail Now. Um, we absolutely support the continued investment of, um, of widening the highway. Um, one of the, we really want it widened to Larkin Valley, open up the, uh, for the South County. Um, we are a big advocate of actually, uh, not a lot of people know this, but the cost of, of widening the highway, I know it's not part of this scope, um, to Rio Del Mar is actually $100 million more because you have to lower the highway to get under the two train trusses. Um, that's actually came from Caltrans. And um, so what we recommend is that you don't replace those two train trestles. You, you keep the tracks on the, or the trail on the ocean side of the highway, and you just have one um, overpass into Aptos Village. It's actually would be ideal even when it's a trail, because then we would reduce the volume of, of users, which is gonna be significant going into, the, into that. The other important thing about this item is the that you're going and reaching out to the California Transportation Commission. So our organization actually talks to the California Transportation Commission. They're your kitty bank. They're the ones who provide you the funds and they actually listen to us. They listen to the to see how the go small governing agencies are are managing their money and are they are they realistic in how they allocate their funds. And so it's really important for us to go to the California Transportation Commission and be an advocate of this organization. I really like to be able to go to them and say, you know, the Santa Cruz Regional Transportation Commission, they got, they know what they're doing. They're really on top of it, which you are on Highway 1 widening. Um, you know, we like to say that because that adds a lot of value and it actually increases the likelihood that you're going to get the funding. You know, that's at the end of the day, we can have great days great ideas and everything, but if we're not going to get our money uh, because the state, the CTC says, well, that organization's not really managing their money well. That's reality. So again, support this, but we really want to support you at a higher level, at the agency level, at the federal level, and at the state level. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Peoples. Anybody else from the public would like to address this? Mr. Vanessa? Okay, well, there's $15 million allocated to <clears throat> State Park to Freedom Boulevard in the next five years. Beyond that, you're talking 40 
million dollars a mile may not be necessary. We don't know. A new normal is coming up. Autonomy is coming up. Autonomous driving, meaning you just want, you sort of follow what's going on. But the, the efficiency becomes very high under those circumstances. Plus, that's the tail end of the commute. So I, again, suggest you take that $15 million and finish everything from 41st Avenue to State Park Drive. Get it done in the next two years. That's my suggestion. I don't think, you know, I just don't think it's going to be necessary to do $40 million a mile. Let's wait and see. You have time. That can be done later. You have time to make, let's put it off and get, take that money and put it in widening the highway between 41st Avenue and State Park Drive. Thank you. Thank you. I do not see any other raised hands, Commissioner. Okay. Um, any comments, any other comments from the commissioners? I just want to say thanks to uh, Sarah Christensen. Uh, got a lot on your plate on this one. Uh, this is very complicated and uh, needs to be updated at times. So thank you very much for your efforts. It's really much, much appreciated. Uh, it's a big, big issue for us. Um, we need to have a motion to... Um, Commissioner Reed has his hand up. Uh, oh, excuse, excuse me, Mr. Reed. Sorry, Bruce. Um, Sarah, just a quick question. I had heard that there was some um, evolution at the county level in conversations with proposed development on the Soquel frontage road and mitigations and recommendations associated with that KP medical office building um, as it relates to overpasses or interchange dynamics at 41st Avenue. I didn't know if you were up to speed on that stuff and how your work um, on this item um, are being informed by those conversations and, and potential mitigation recommendations? We, the RTC did uh, review the development proposal uh, and provided comments. And a lot of our comments were um, to encourage active transportation connections, uh, definitely to the new Chanticleer Bridge. Um, but beyond that, uh, you know, our project is going first. So um, we're just encouraging that development to uh, connect to the infrastructure that we are uh, building there. Yeah, I just maybe would recommend reaching out to Matt and, and county staff and getting an update on where that uh, that EIR processing is. But Matt Machado, the public works director, right? Yeah, sure. yeah. Matt, right. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? I think we've already asked, we've got some from the, uh, we closed that from the public. Uh, this does need uh, a motion to um, approve the resolutions for the five-year plan and the draft contract. So moved. moved by Karina Thompson Gomez. I'll second. Um, who, I don't know who that was. Shock. Shock. Yeah. Oh, shock. Sure. Thank you, John. Okay, uh, please call the roll. Commission Alternate Lynn. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Bator. Aye. Commissioner McPherson. Aye. Commission Alternate Reed. Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern. Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Aye. Commissioner Caput. Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez. Yes. yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Aye. And Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. Unanimous. That's unanimously. Okay, now we will now go to item number uh, 23, which we're gonna review the two items to be discussed in closed session. Um, one with a conference with a, a labor negotiate, three, excuse me, three issues. Um, uh, we have a labor negotiator, uh, property negotiators, um, on the Santa Cruz County Branch Railway, and then to review the public employee performance evaluation of our executive director. Uh, Mr. Council, uh, Mr. Mattis, is there anything reportable from the closed session issue? Um, there, there may be one reportable item, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, would that be, which one would that be? Um, 
Um, I, I would recommend we discuss that in closed session. Oh, first. Excuse me. I got it. My, sorry. Okay. Uh, so we will um, we will move to the closed session and uh, with the possibility of uh, a public comment when we get out. So what we'll do is it's exactly noon, I think, or just right about there. So we will take a uh, 10 minute break. Is that all right with everybody or do you? Uh, okay, then we don't have to change. Um, we can just stay where we are, right? Let's no. just take a, a ten, 10 minute break. Um, is that have to, um, you'll have to go into the um, Zoom meeting for the closed sessions. You all should have received an email this morning. Okay. If you didn't, please um, call me or text me. Okay. We will, uh, it's uh, uh, noon. We will uh, come back uh, at uh, 1210 and go to the other uh, Zoom meeting that you have, that you should have. So thank you. And um, we'll um, recess to the closed session. Good afternoon, everyone. Closed session has just ended at um, 118 and we did not have any reportable items. Thank you everyone for your participation.